A person was killed in a hit and run crash on the northwest side this morning. It was at 86th and Zionsville Road. Also, a person was shot and killed at a laundromat just south of Lawrence along 38th Street near Midhoffer. Then another person was also shot to death along LaSalle Street on the east side. Delphi murder suspect Richard Allen won't have his charges dismissed. Harrison Silcox reports. The defense team for Allen was not able to prove that missing evidence in the case meant someone else committed the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German, ruled Special Judge Fran Gold Tuesday. Police interviews on DVR tapes from the case had been recorded over, and Judge Gold believed that all happened by mistake. So Allen still faces two charges of murder out of Carroll County. His trial starts May 13th. Everson Silcox, 93, WIBC Mobile News. Tornadoes hit parts of southern Indiana on Tuesday. There was one said to have hit near Evansville, causing some damage. Another also touched down in Jeffersonville and crossed the Ohio River into Kentucky. Eric Doden, a Republican candidate for governor in Indiana, promises that if he's in charge, the state will have an ambitious and forward-thinking plan. And I think as a leader, one of the most important things you do, especially as the governor, is set the tone every day for what we expect to improve, how we expect to improve it, how you hold your agency as accountable. Doden talking with Tony Katz on WYBC. Bestiality is the reason a man is in jail in St. Joseph County. Andrew Sue is accused of making videos of himself having sex with a dog. He's also charged with torturing an animal. Police were tipped off about Sue by someone he met through a dating app. Well, it was supposed to be a neutral site game, but it felt like anything but as Indiana State beat Utah 100 to 90 inside Hinkle Fieldhouse in the NIT Final Four. We feed off the energy that the crowd brings us. You know, Sycamore Nation is one of a kind, and you know, they brought the energy today, and we just got the job done because of them. Robbie Avila, who had 26 points for the Sycamores, who will now face Seton Hall in the championship game on Thursday. Traffic on the fives, Matt Bear. All right, Kurt, still looking at westbound 86th Street on the northwest side. Westbound 86th Street shut down at Zionsville Road because of a fatal hit and run crash from earlier this morning. Crash downtown 10th Street at Illinois. I'm Matt Bear with traffic on the fives. Follow us at WIBC Traffic. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Pendleton Pike. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors. So come celebrate on Wednesday, April 10th at 8101 Pendleton Pike, Suite E in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-648-5581 or visit Meet Center wellindiana.com uline is here for the hard workers for the ones rolling up their sleeves working around the clock and getting the job done you're dedicated to doing what it takes to keep a business growing uline is dedicated to helping you make that happen working seven days a week staying fully stocked and ready to ship any of our 41,000 items the same day uline your shipping and industrial supply specialists visit uline.com the forecast from the American Standard Heating Weather Center. Good morning. Cloudy, colder, blustery, scattered rain and storm chances this afternoon. Maybe some snow mixing in at times. 42 for the high. Cloudy with a mix of rain and snow overnight, a low of 35. I'm Wish TV Storm Track 8's Marcus Bailey, 93 WIBC. 39 and cloudy on Monument Circle. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WIBC.com. <laughs> You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, six minutes after nine. You're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. We start the show off today talking about a poll. Yes, this time it does include Robert Kennedy Jr., three-way race between Biden, Trump, and Kennedy. Oh! And this poll shows that since Robert Kennedy has announced his vice president running mate, mm -hmm. his numbers are actually dropping. Oh, who didn't see that one coming, Casey? Yeah. If only there had been a radio show that would say, this is going to be a horrible pick and your numbers are going to go in the toilet. Mm -hmm. He's down to 9.6%. Okay, so, the, uh, so he picks this woman who is some sort of uh, tech, Techno, Wall Street, tech attorney, entrepreneur. Yeah, whatever. She's super connected into the corporate world. 
which you know okay let's let's separate the fact that she's just about as entertaining as as you know dried paint let's just remove that from the equation that would kind of be um like a run-of-the-mill pick for a politician unless you're running on being the anti politician mm -hmm. unless you're running on the idea of i'm different it's why the it's why the campaigns of these these men and women running for governor in indiana are so laughable i'm an outsider no i'm an no you're all insiders it's a contest of the outsiders the only one who's outsider is written hour and of course she has basically no chance it appears to win but the of the five kind of on the stage people you're all hyper-connected. You're all lying. Like, the, the whole outsider thing is just a joke for these people running for governor in the state of Indiana. They're all the ultimate insiders. And so if you're Kennedy and your whole premise of your campaign is, hey, if you want something different, choose me, people do kind of sort of pay attention to things they're mildly interested in. <laughs> now, the public at large, no, they don't pay attention to their government. They don't pay attention to how they're getting screwed. But I think Kennedy, to people who are even just take a peripheral interest in politics they were kind of like okay his dad would have probably been president if he hadn't been assassinated obviously his uncle was president it's the lineage he kind of looks like his dad you know hey okay i'm mildly interested in what this guy is going to do maybe because i despise the other two guys especially if you're not in one of the camps mm -hmm. and the first kind of big opening salvo for this guy is to pick a corporate you know, straight out of central casting, uber rich, access to money, and elitist woman who has no, it's not like he picked Mark Cuban. I mean, if you'd have picked Mark Cuban, okay, he's a super rich guy, but you say, oh, it's a Shark Tank guy. Oh, he says super controversial stuff. He's kind of wild and wacky. Okay, mm -hmm. still picked a super rich, you know, business titan, but at least it's something different. There's nothing different about this. She's boring. She brings nothing to the table other than access to money and corporate insiders, and isn't that what you're supposed to be the antithesis of? Well, Mark Cuban would have been at least entertaining and a known commodity. People are familiar with his name and his businesses. Nobody knows who Nicole Shanahan is connected to. And, and it would be dip, like when Trump was running in 2016, he picked Mike Pence because ultimately it didn't matter. And yeah, I remember at the time having big discussions with people, and I said he should pick Newt Gingrich because Newt Gingrich is a just complete badass lunatic maniac when it comes to being on a campaign trail delivering a message. And ultimately, I think Trump realized, one, Trump wanted somebody who would be totally subservient to him and give up any sense of principle or whatever that they had. And Mike Pence, of course, was totally that because Mike Pence is the ultimate insider grifter person who knew he was about to get his ass kicked by John Gregg and would have done or said anything uh, to be on that ticket with Trump. And Trump knew that. That's what Trump does. He sizes people up. But Trump was, my point on all this is, the vice presidential pick didn't matter because Trump was interesting enough himself. Every time Trump was on television, especially back then, you felt like, oh, my gosh, I've got to see this. Who is he going to give a nickname to? Mm -hmm. Who is he you know, going to call fat or talk about their face? Or, you know, what? there were a litany of reasons, whether you liked the guy or you didn't, we must watch Donald Trump on O'Reilly or on Hannity or on whatever. He didn't He didn't need Pence. He, the Pence was not going to make a difference for him one way or another. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is not interesting enough that – he doesn't need somebody running with him who is interesting. In fact, Robert F. Kennedy is incredibly uninteresting, and no one would care at all about him if his name wasn't Robert F. Kennedy. So this comes from The Hill and their decision desk headquarters, and what they've done is they've taken 107 different polls, whether they oh. be from uh, Quinnipiac or they come from, um, you know, just the different polls. Uh, what's the other one? Oh, Harris uh, Forbes is another one. Okay, and so th what they did is they averaged all these polls together, mm -hmm. and when they did that, Trump has a 2.3 percent lead over everybody. That, what are the numbers? That seems about that seems about right. What are the numbers? So when you take Trump, Biden, and Kennedy, Trump is sitting at 41.8 percent. Biden is at 39.5 percent, yep. and Kennedy is at 9.6. Yeah, I totally I totally believe that. And here's the problem for Kennedy: the only chance Kennedy has to be a difference maker is if he gets in those debates. Because he has to be seen by a, a worldwide audience, and right now, if those numbers were to hold, I think the, I think the threshold is ten. I could be totally wrong on that, but this is another reason he really needed to make maybe it's fifteen a I, different decision, right? On his because VP you pick. you have to keep people looking 
at you. You have to keep people's interest. And in the 24-7 news cycle where people have the attention span of a gnat, it is very hard, especially when you are not overly interesting, to keep people looking at you. And he did not get that. Ads are not going to keep people looking at him. It doesn't matter how much money she raises. She won't be able to raise enough for him to be able to compete from an ads and infrastructure standpoint with the other with the other two. Can't like it's not even going to be. Let's say let's say he could raise a hundred million dollars. Maybe he can. Don't know. Probably not, but maybe he could. That's a tenth. It's probably a tenth of what the other two candidates. I mean, we're talking. These guys may raise a billion dollars, mm -hmm. Casey, mm -hmm. both of them. It wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. You can't compete with that. It doesn't matter. You're in an earned media game at this point. And this person is not going to get you any earned media. So what happens, and this is actually good for Trump, because when he's not interesting, he being Robert F. Kennedy Jr. anymore, when people move off of Robert F. Kennedy Jr., they say, okay, now I have to pick the lesser of two evils. Clearly in this case, and it, polling backs this up. It benefits Trump. It benefits Trump because yep. Biden is so bad. Yeah, okay, so Kennedy, he is polling the highest since Ross Perot did in 1992. And what this is doing is this third party, it's influencing the other parties, the other candidates, as you mentioned. And Trump is the one who is going to come out on top of this. But why? Okay, so let's go back. You're old enough to remember this. This is not an age commentary. But, <laughs> but sure. Kev was not even born yet, so Kev is out on this one. I was young. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, Ross Perot was actually the first person to me that I really remember I would have been, what would I have been in 1992? I would have been eight, eight, eight years old. Is that right? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it would have been eight years old. Uh, and I remember, like, this is the first time I ever remember kind of, like, engaging in anything political and thinking, wow, this guy's super interesting. I think it was because my grandparents were big Ross Perot mm -hmm. supporters. Mm -hmm. And my grandparents really came from opposite kind of political. My grandma tended to vote more Republican. My grandfather was a union railroad guy, voted more Democrat. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, like, them being kind of on the same team on Perot. And I remember even my parents yeah. being kind of for Perot, and that was interesting. Perot was was captivated people because, one, he had ideas that were totally different than the other two guys. Two, he was super rich. And remember he bought, like, CBS? Like, you're like I'm here to see my favorite sitcom. No, you're not. You're seeing Ross Perot now. Mm -hmm. And he just bought 30 minutes of time. And three, he was a cartoon character. Yep. He was kind of wacky he was different and you're like okay i want to see what this guy has to say every time he's on television i i just remember him because he was a big eds guy right and at one point my father worked for eds yeah. so that was the name that was being thrown around well, around our house well remember he had these wacky phrases like that sucking sound is the jobs you hear <laughs> Mm -hmm. going to Mexico. And it was things people could get their head around of, okay, this is who this guy is. And here's the thing about Ross Perot. If he hadn't quit, because people forget, he quit, and then he came back. There was some deal with his daughter. His daughter was getting, like, blackmailed, or or they were trying to run a smear campaign against her or something. I forget what it was. But he quit, and then he came back, and he never fully recovered. He was, like, leading in the polls at one point in the race. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr., while he, I don't think he could ever lead in the polls, he had an opportunity to capture some of that same magic that Perot did of the ability to be different, but no, but there's nothing different about him now. He's just another guy. How do you feel if you're Kennedy when your entire family has just denounced your campaign and is supporting Biden? Like, oh. when your own family can't do it? Casey, you should see the feuds I've had with my family over the years. That wouldn't mean <laughs> nothing. That wouldn't mean nothing. I just, it, there's no, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is going to continue to go down because he doesn't have any big ideas. He doesn't have anything that stands out that the per, average people can get their head around. And he's not special enough to make people break their societal norm and gut instinct, which is, well, oh my gosh, even though I actually hate these two parties, I can't let the one I hate worse win. Well, I think another thing that really is going to be hurting Biden is in this is that 28% of voters say that they are considering steering away from Joe Biden and they want another option besides Donald Trump. But when you talk to people who are under 40 years old, that number shoots up to 47%. So that's the big base of Biden's voters, those young people. And if they're not happy with him, who is? But it's a matter of will they actually vote? Yeah. Will they take the time out of their day and go do it? And once they get there, are they really going to vote for Kennedy? We're going to hear from Donald Trump coming up. He was in Michigan and Wisconsin. A lot to say. And, of course, the word bloodbath is making its rounds again. You're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC like magic it appears in the sky a rainbow 
somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams. Hidden behind that beauty is trouble. Get a cone tornado right there. Don't be fooled. Tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornadoes. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh my God. This spring, depend on your severe weather station. Baseball size hill. 93 WIPC. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season, and now is the time to act to maximize your equity. Mark Deedle has the plan and experience to sell your home fast and for maximum value this spring. Perhaps you're worried about settling for less money with a low-ball instant offer. Mark Deedle guarantees your home sold at a mutually agreed-upon price and deadline, or he will buy it. Listen to what Greg in Franklin had to say about working with Mark Deedle. My tenant moved out of my investment property, and I was done and ready to sell. I heard about Mark on the radio, and everything they say is true. In 15 days on the market, I had a cash offer I wanted on the property, and it was done. Selling with Mark Deedle was fast, easy, and profitable. Call the agent I trust and recommend and the agent who guarantees your home sold or he'll buy it. Call Mark Deedle at 317-755-4232 for all the details or go online to markdeedle.com. That's Mark, D-I-E-T-E-L.com. Did you know that the tubs and showers installed by most bathroom remodelers aren't waterproof? I'm not kidding. They're not waterproof. That's because the other guys cheap out and put acrylic caulk directly on acrylic tub and shower panels. You can't do that. Water will seep through, and then you've got mold, mildew, and rot. To do it right, you have to first prime the surfaces, then apply the caulk, then you have to seal the caulk. It's a three-step process. Prime, apply, seal. If you've ever seen shower seams with mold growing on them, well, now you know why. Some cheapskate decided to save $25 in materials and 20 minutes of labor. And now you have a mold and mildew problem. Call Bats R Us instead. We never cut corners. We always take our time to do it right for a 100% waterproof installation every single time. Call now and get $1,500 off plus low to no monthly payments. Our number is 317-886-1761 or online at BathsRUs.com. That's BathsRUs.com. Fellas, there's a lot of people talking about testosterone, but do your homework and go to a provider that you can trust. We recommend Low T Center to get your levels checked. At Low T Center, they make it quick and easy. You walk in and take a simple blood test, and you'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. If you've been feeling tired, grumpy, have noticed weight gain and loss of muscle mass, you may have low T levels. Go to LowTCenter.com and book your appointment online. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. By now, you've heard all of our ads. America's largest injury law firm. It means that when you hire us, you get a legal army. When it comes to law, size matters. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Indy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndyDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndyDecorativeConcrete.com. You're listening to Rob Kendall. That guy's brain is a bag full of cats. He can smell crazy on him. And Casey Daniels. If she were a president, she'd be Abraham Lincoln. On 93 WIPC. He was in Michigan and Wisconsin, and before he arrived in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the Republican National Committee fired up a new website called BidenBloodbath.com. Oh, wow. Yes, this is a website that is dedicated to, quote, highlighting the horrors of the Biden migrant 
crime. Oh. It is 22 minutes after 9. You're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. So Trump making the border yet another big talking point in his campaign stops. When he was in Michigan, he had mentioned Ruby Garcia, who was a uh, woman who was killed by uh, an illegal. And he also referred back to Lake and Riley. And uh, he said that he vows to launch the biggest deportation operation in American history if elected president. On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. And if other countries say they won't take them back, we're not going to take them back. I will say that, uh, yeah, here they come. You're just going to hold on, hold on to your britches because here they come. They're coming back. Mm -hmm. It's like when I return to work each time, Casey's like, no, we don't want him back. And I'm like, hold on to your britches. I'm coming back. Here I come. I'm coming back. So the word bloodbath is making its, uh, you know, reappearance sure. again. Now, last time. Trump was talking about the auto industry. Yeah. And this time it's a little different. And uh, here he is saying that it's Joe Biden's border bloodbath. But I stand before you today to declare the Joe Biden's border bloodbath. And that's what it is. It's a bloodbath. They tried to use that term incorrectly on me two weeks ago. You know, it's all about misinformation. That's all they do is cheat on elections and disinformation, misinformation, fairly closely related, those two words. But they basically mean that uh, it's all talk, but it's a border bloodbath and it's destroying our country. It's a very bad thing happening. It's uh, going to end on the day that I take office, which will be January 20th. It'll end. And so while he was there, he was endorsed by the uh, police officers there. One of the things that Trump struggles with is the ability to pivot and what i mean by this is like it's sort of he's got one he's got one offense he's like you know oftentimes in sports it's about adjustments in the middle of the game and trump's gift was the ability to dominate every room that he's in captivate every camera that he's in front of and he basically swallows up everything that comes into his path and that worked well for him in 2015 and 2016 what we saw, though, by 2020 was people said, we're kind of tired of this, right? Like, like, we know you're president, and there are certain things we expect from our president, and you're simply not giving us those things. And I think what played out was Trump was fine until he lost control of the narrative, and he lost control of the narrative because he gave it up during COVID. He surrendered the authority of the executive branch during COVID. He gave it away to Fauci, and he let the Congress print all the money, and he sort of was like, hey, you guys handle this, and I'll just whatever. And so what people said is, hey, you're you're not kind of doing the stuff that we elected you to do, and you're kind of exhausting anyway, and so you got two strikes against you, and basically we're, we're kind of done here. So if you pivot back to, to now, right, like – the way Trump wins is not to be King Kong and be in front of every camera and dominate every single semblance of the media cycle. Everybody knows it's Donald Trump against Joe Biden. Everybody knows Donald Trump is the Republican nominee, and everybody knows Joe Biden is the president of the United States. He doesn't need to be that anymore. He can simply just take his foot off the gas, and like he kind of did there, you know, it was like he's not talking about anybody's weight or their appearance or their... He does need to get off the stolen stuff because unless you're going to do something to change how these votes are tabulated, what good does it do you? Like everybody knows you think that. And unless there is something in front of you that you're going to prevent the votes from being calculated they, the way they previously were or change something, I don't think that does him any good. But I, I think the premise of just talking about the issues and the, and the border and hammering that home – I think that resonates with people because it's a way vo uh, area which Biden is super vulnerable. I think it uh, you said that he lost the narrative. It reminds me of when he lost control when he was building the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. You're so watching something, right? What are you doing? There's the show on Netflix. It's called Trump, an American Dream. And it's fascinating because it, it pretty much starts in the 70s when he got the Commodore Hotel in New York City yeah. and changed that. And then... Uh, he changed it into a, a Hyatt it, back when he wasn't even putting his name on hotels. Uh -huh. And then it goes through the entire process of how he um, 
he bought the the Trump Tower and all of his relationships with Ivana and then Marla May. It's like the Are whole they, thing, what, what? and it's amazing how you can see his personality change through this documentary. Okay, so I want to take a break because when I when I when we come back, I want to ask you. I have a very specific question to ask you about this documentary, mm -hmm. and then I know we got other things we got to get to too. But I've been I, I want to ask you because. I think I know the how you're going to answer this, but I, I think it would be very insightful for people in the listener land about what this documentary kind of reveals about Trump. Okay. It's coming up. You're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. What if you could build a six-figure retirement income with almost half the money saved? You heard that right. Get a discount on your retirement, creating a six-figure income with 40% less than traditional 401ks and mutual funds. Hi, I'm Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, executive producer, and star in a brand new Hollywood documentary called The Retirement Deception. In this film, we traveled over 20,000 miles interviewing real Americans who've retired successfully with a great lifestyle and peace of mind. They share their stories on how they get more retirement income with the same dollar saved, and the money's never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even the super wealthy are shifting money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you're over 50 and want a bigger, better retirement with less money saved, call to talk to a specialist and get a free copy of this brand new movie at 800-486-9595. This is a $30 value, but when you call today, you can get it completely free. I'll even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. Call right now, 1-800-486-9595. That's 1-800-486-9595. Again, that's 1-800-486-9595. Hey, Pat Sullivan here for Hope Plumbing. April showers can bring Bring plumbing downers. Don't get caught in a flood this spring. Make sure your sump pump is working properly to avoid any damage. A sump pump is vital to protecting your home from heavy rains. During the month of April, my friends at Hope Plumbing will buy back your old sump pump for $300 with the purchase of an upgraded sump pump and a new battery backup system. Call Hope Plumbing today or visit them online at hopeplumbing.com. Whether taking on large commercial landscapes or your own backyard, let Steel help with your pursuit of the perfect cut. Introducing Steel Zero Turn Mowers for homeowners and pros with a wide range of features and options. Like our advanced four-wheel suspension system and 0% financing available, it's time to let the pursuit begin. Real Steel. Find yours at steelusa.com slash zero turn. Available at select dealers. Financing available on qualifying purchases and subject to credit approval. See dealer for details. If you see me stopped in the McDonald's drive-thru, just staring at the menu with my what-should-I-order face, don't interrupt. It's the most important decision I'll make all day. Decide on delicious with buy one, get one for a dollar. Now with the hot and spicy McChicken, McDouble, or small fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Valid for product of equal or lesser value. Ninety-three WIBC Mobile News on the level on the go. Is it right or wrong? It is thirty-nine and mostly cloudy downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at nine thirty. A federal appeals court will hear arguments today over a controversial Texas immigration law. The law would give Texas the power to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. The Biden administration argues that the federal government has sole authority to control immigration policy. Nearly a dozen people killed and hundreds more hurt when an earthquake hit Taiwan overnight. The U.S. Geological Survey initially putting data out showing it was a magnitude 7.4 quake that hit just off the eastern part of Taiwan at around 9 a.m. Taiwan time. There are reports of people trapped inside some of the buildings, also reports of widespread power outages, other videos on social media showing multiple huge rock slides and landslides slides. Again, a magnitude 7.4 quake. Fox's Bill Malugin. In women's college basketball, IU, or Iowa's win over uh, LSU in the Elite Eight on Monday averaged over 12 million viewers on ESPN. That would make it the most watched women's college basketball game on record. Your opening bell report on 93 WIBC brought to you by Absolute Wealth Management, LLC. Another bad start to the day. The Dow was off 47 to 39,463. The NASDAQ down at 74 to 18,255. And the S&P 500 is down 13 to 5,247. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WIBC.com. Hi, I'm Kay Diener. 
34 years ago, my husband Bill and I joined TAB after hearing about its community involvement, service opportunities, and welcoming nature of the congregation. I have always liked volunteering and helping others, and at TAB, I found many ways to do both. Over the years, I've had the privilege of serving as a deacon, an elder, a tutor, Sunday school helper, member of the media and children's ministries committees, as well as other areas when able. In so doing, I have witnessed the caring hearts of others who selflessly share their love of Christ and TAB. I'm Kay Diener, and I invite you to come to TAB and see for yourself. Tabernacle Presbyterian Church, 34th Street and Central Avenue in Indianapolis, invites you to worship Sunday morning at 8 or 10 a.m. If you can't make it in person, tune in to Sunday with Tab, Sunday mornings at 6.30 on WIBC, or find us online at tabpres.org. You're listening to The Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIBC. As if I don't get enough Trump at work, what do I do? I watch a documentary about him when I'm at home as well. Yeah, I can't believe you did that to yourself. <laughs> I know. It was fascinating, though. Uh, so the doc, it was released a few years back, but it's called Trump, an American Dream. And the interesting... Great dream? <laughs> an, an American dream. Oh. An okay. American dream. For those of you who don't know, did you know, Casey, I once interviewed the president? I do. And uh, he said it was a great dream. Yes. He wished every interview could be mm-hmm. just like this. I, I, you know, I just want to, I know we get new listeners all the time and I didn't want people to be like, what is, what is he talking about? Anyway, go ahead. I'm very sorry. It was a great dream. So uh, this documentary, it uh, it goes, spans like five decades of his life. Mm-hmm. Now, keep in mind, I'm only halfway through the third episode. There's, I believe, five episodes. And so I'm only up and I'm, I'm pre-apprentice okay. still. Okay. So I'm just entering the 90s of his life. Yeah, so sort of the rise of Trump, obviously mm-hmm. his late 70s, early 80s. Then have you? He, he obviously at one point hit very hard financial times. Yeah. And have you made it to there yet? I, I have. It's just the beginning of that when he bought the Taj Mahal yeah. in Atlantic City, and he's starting to have all of these troubles yeah. And uh, when he marries uh, Marlo Mabels. Okay, so— Here is the thing that I always find interesting about Trump, and I say this as someone who um, every every engagement I make with my government or someone who wants to be in my government, I recognize it's a largely transactional relationship. Like I am not under the delusion that the overwhelming majority of people that are in my government as elected people or want to be in my government actually give a damn about me at all. Like I'm not... I don't run around thinking, oh, my God, there, there are a couple. There are a couple of people I know personally. I know, wow, that person would be really good, and they really you know, want to do a good job representing me. It's a largely transactional relationship in the sense of this person has these worldviews or promote these policies, and these policies line up with my worldview and my belief of how the world works best rather than, than the other person they're running against or peoples they're running against. With Trump, though, it seems... And this is fascinating to me, and, I, and then I'm going to ask you this this question about mm-hmm. the documentary. It seems as though people don't have that view of him. They have this view of, though, Trump really understands me mm-hmm. or likes me or cares about me. And that has been a very interesting study for for me because from what I know about Trump, there's nothing in Trump's life in the lead-up to politics that believes leads you to believe he is anything other than a really rich, very connected person mm-hmm. who simply, I looked at it in voting for him, it has more worldviews that I agree with than the other people or policies that will promote a worldview I agree with than the other people. But the, there's such a connection with Trump that goes far beyond the way I view politics and the way I view politicians that people genuinely believe he knows or gets them or cares about them. Is there anything in this documentary mm-hmm. as you're leading up to the whatever the first 20 30 years of Trump's professional life yeah. that would lead you to believe he is in it for any person other than himself? Well, you know what, it's really interesting because in I really liked 70s Trump. Really? Yeah, I mean he's almost unrecognizable from what he is today. What do you mean? Uh, because he seemed very down to earth, he seemed very hard working, he just wanted to be successful. It was just a completely different persona i mean think about him marrying ivana like they had a very small church wedding um his his parents were there he was very family oriented i mean he still is today but it just seemed on a much smaller 
real scale. Yeah. Like he picked this woman. They were going to be successful partners together. Interesting. And um, it just, you know, he really wanted his father's approval. Yeah. And, and it all sort of like his persona. He just seemed like he was just a hard worker. Nobody knew who he was. He wasn't putting his name on the buildings right. yet. Um, he just seemed like a different person. Right. And then when he started to become very successful, especially when he had uh, his casinos in Atlantic City and the money started rolling in, you can almost see that he changed. Ah, perfect answer, Casey, because this is the problem with Trump as the politician, because the goal of the politician, and you and I have talked about this many, many times, the goal of the politician should be to get elected or reelected because you want to enact the things that you are campaigning on because you believe my election will make people's lives better and this worldview that I have or these policies I propose will, will make people's lives better. And the problem with Trump was never his policies. The problem with Trump where he barely beats Hillary Clinton was not his policies and the problem when, in losing to Joe Biden was not his policies. The issue was him personally. And it's interesting that you are describing a guy who once seemed markedly different, mm -hmm. still driven personally to be successful, mm -hmm. still driven to create a great business, still driven to 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 you know conquer various tasks and challenges, yet did it in a way with a personality that allowed him to become a very successful person because people kind of liked that version of him. And and so it really the business thing mirrors the, mm -hmm. po the political thing in the sense of it's never been, it been his intellect that's in question. It's never been his drive that's in question. It's never been his uh, proposals or ideas that are in question. It is his love affair with himself and his inability to take his foot off the gas with that love affair with himself that has almost always, whether it be in business or in politics, been the great downfall of Trump. It was uh, really interesting because you can see his disagreements with Ed Koch, who was the mayor of New York City, which is, you know, well documented. They didn't like each other, but yet they worked together and, uh, you know, make America great again. That's not a Trump original saying. Reagan said that. Even Bill Clinton said that. Um, so he kind of dabbled in politics. And there was even a petition in 1988 for him to run for president. So he was always kind of on the outside of politics, but never went all the way in. One thing he said in this documentary is that he, he doesn't like the word ambition. When people say, oh, I'm ambitious, I'm ambitious, he doesn't like the word. He said, just be ambitious. Don't say you're ambitious. Yeah. It's, it was, it's just really interesting um, to watch the arc of his personality. Yeah, all right, so what's the name of the thing? Uh, it's called Trump and American Dream, and okay. it's on Netflix. All right. Um, and and clearly you can see it's going to be slanted. Sure, you've got to take it with a grain of Absolutely. salt of what people are saying because uh, you know they interview some of his lifelong friends, and many of them start out and they say, you know, um, I used to like him until right. sure. Um, so well, you just got to go into it knowing that it's not all going to be, you know, you rainbows know, and sunshine for Trump. It's interesting. I was chuckling as I was driving into work today. I was just kind of like thinking about things to myself. And sometimes I'll think about things we've done on the show. And what what is really interesting to me is um, I call it the infallible Mr. Syndrome. And what I mean by that is people get different things or ideas in their mind and they romanticize them to the point that they become the infallible Mr. Fill-in-the-blank. And in this case, like, I was chuckling because while the overwhelming amount of our audience has had a lot of fun with Purdue, and mm -hmm. even the Purdue people have had fun with Purdue, mm -hmm. and they get it, and they get it like, look, we would be saying the same thing if I, about IU if they were there, and they're not to the, you know, just insane to the point that I'm never listening again. That We do have people out there that are so wed to the infallible Mr., in this case, Edie, in this case, or the Purdue basketball team, that even when you'll say, hey, wow, Purdue's a pretty good basketball team, but they certainly have a lot of advantages based on the fact that they have a gigantic, jolly green giant human in the middle who may not be all that great. <laughs> He's just huge and gets a lot of leeway from the refs. Pete, there We have people who are in right now in the infallible Mr. Edie world, mm -hmm. and they will just accept nothing else. The same thing is kind of true with a lot of the many, many Trump people, where it's the infallible Mr. Trump, where you're saying, wait a second, part of what 
the problem with our country is we get in love with these politicians and we like view it as team sport rather than we should be adversarial to every, every single one of these people. So even if you're going to vote for some guy, you should still be like just all over their flaws and their shortcomings and pointing those out and holding these people accountable because they're doing things that affect us. Yet with Trump, it's the infallible Mr. Trump syndrome where there's so many people who were, were pointing out obvious things that have clearly done him in on multiple occasions. And if you look th at throughout human history, and the Bible's litter littered with these people, who the love of themselves and the love of themselves being greater than anything else mm -hmm. ultimately uh, was their undoing or unraveling or caused them great strife or, or, or calamity, people just won't accept that. And it's like with Trump, you do, he should be held to account on this because his intellect, his ambition, his intuition his intelligence his his uh, vision i mean none of that is in question like he is one of the most interesting people who has ever lived in this country he should, would probably be on the mount rushmore most interesting people who have ever lived in america yet his love of himself and his track record in business in relationships in politics he has a 50-year track record as you're spelling out mm -hmm. whether you like the guy or like his politics or you don't of putting himself and his love of himself and his own desires mm -hmm. and his own and his own publicity ahead of of a th of the things whatever they are ambition politics or a, a business politics whatever that have been his undoing and yet if you point that out now people are just like they will just scream at you as though you're some sort of traitor to your country but it's like no here's the track record of this guy and we should be calling it out because we want we should want to make him better. Yeah, exactly. I I think it's it's been really interesting to watch this show because, you know, I've been alive during all of this and it's always just been around. I mean, Trump in the 80s and the 90s and the apprentice and the art of the deal and the game and all of his successes outside of his development and buildings you know there's this whole other side to him and his family and they get into his personal relationships and it's interesting to kind of look back on it even though you lived through it here and i know we got to get to a break but so I'll, I'll leave everybody with this this is why what we're saying right now is important for this year because trump is like a television show that no matter what show it is very few shows ever get out before they've jumped the shark because there's there's a financial interest in it, right? They like the networks, like man, we don't want to create new shows, and the show's just popular enough that the ratings are good enough. Almost every single show, there's very it is very rare that a show ends before people are like, eh, probably should have ended like a year ago. Season We've kinda, ago, kind of yeah. seen it all and done it all, and and that is where Trump is. People have seen the Trump show, and this election this year is not going to be decided on how outlandish Trump can be, how much media attention Trump can garner. Everybody knows he's running for president. Everybody knows his policy views. The election this year is going to be decided on whether people can stomach Donald Trump personally because they so loathe the politics of Biden. And that is going to be, and we've said this for quite a while now, but it, it remains and it will remain all the way up until election day. Can Trump personally put aside what you're spelling out here as 50 years of history and a pattern of behavior mm -hmm. in order to make himself palatable enough to enough people that he can win the presidency. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. How would you like to get a 13% bonus when you invest your money? Oh my goodness, Casey, that sounds wonderful. And not only do you get a 13% bonus, you'll also get an annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Hey, it's Kendall and Casey. Discover how you can get an upfront 13% bonus, plus a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Learn more from the retirement guy we trust, Bill Demery in Indy. Just Call 317-932-9912. Now, this is just a no-brainer for me. Yeah, right? I mean, you get an upfront 13% bonus plus a competitive annual return that's average 7% a year for the past 10 years. And it's backed by one of the largest insurance companies in the world. So call Bill now at 317-932-9912. 317-932-9912. Past performance is no guarantee of future returns. Tonight on the Tony Kinnecast, is the algorithm the next super evil overlord? Are Uber and DoorDash drivers doomed to corporate slavery? Nah. Tune in at 7 p.m. right here or the podcast anytime. 
Are you struggling with anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues, but feel like you have to keep it together to tell everyone, I'm fine? Hi, this is Pastor Micah Beckwith from Life Church, and we want you to know you're not alone. Starting April 7th, we're launching a new five-week series called I'm Not Fine to bring awareness and understanding to mental illness. Through powerful stories, biblical teaching, and community support, we'll explore what it means to honestly face our struggles and find healing. Join us this Sunday as we kick off I'm Not Fine and start breaking down the stigmas together. Go to lifechurchin.com for our service times and locations. It's not about being fine. It's about finding life. We'll see you this weekend. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Pendleton Pike. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors. So come celebrate on Wednesday, April 10th at 8101 Pendleton Pike, Suite E in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-648-5581 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com. Head to the contest page at WIBC.com and enter for your chance to win a pair of tickets to see Jim Gaffigan, Barely Alive Tour, Saturday, October 5th at Clues Memorial Hall. For more info, head to WIBC.com. Let me hear strong oh! like a dog out in the yard. You jamming? Good stuff. Coming in hot. Charge yeah, this is, a, this is a story of several failed relationships for me. Do gets, tell. Gets me right in the feels. <laughs> Start talking. <laughs> this is the stuff we really want to know about. I love the part where uh, she just takes the credit card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Great storytelling. Bob Seeger, he's the best. Yeah. He says sunspot, baby. Yeah. That's what we got coming up, right? A sunspot? <laughs> That's how oh, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. With the eclipse, you're very concerned about the safety of everyone. Well, our boss. On and the our, eclipse. And our boss, David Wood, is doing this. He's now sending us, like, eclipse briefings. Have you been getting these emails from no, David Wood? No, I didn't Wood? see We that. just got another one. Did like, we? Uh, it totally fr- Anytime we get an email while we're on the air from our boss, it freaks me out. Uh-huh. And I, I it, and it, look, as long as it doesn't say, come see me after the show, I think we're okay. But it's like he's been sending us these, uh, I think it's the National Weather Service eclipse briefings. Yes, yes. And, uh, no hazardous, hazardous weather is expected during the eclipse time. Yeah, okay, so what does this mean? Key messages. Let's just cut to the key messages, shall we? This mm-hmm. is from the National Weather Service. Sky cover probabilities have continued their s- slow downward trend, mm-hmm. but the potential for rain and higher coverage remains. That Coverage means clouds, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, no hazardous weather expected during the eclipse time outside of residual minor flooding. That seems somewhat hazardous. <laughs> Minor flooding. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. L- like, I, why don't we ask Noah about, about <laughs> right? such well, minor flooding? Um, and winds will generally be south southerly at 10 to 15 miles an hour, highs in the 60s to 70s. Okay, so that means... Uh, there's there's going to chance- be a chance of rain. Yeah, Isn't but there's... there always? Well, right, right. But there's also a chance, it sounds like it's getting better, you'll actually be able to see... This mm-hmm. thing. The actual eclipse. So um, how about the schools that are being closed during the eclipse? Okay, so let's talk about this for a second, shall mm-hmm. we, Casey? Because every time there's one of these stupid referendums and the school corporations use the children as the human shields and they're told how vital the schools are to little Johnny or Sally's existence and how if you don't vote for one of these tax cap violating referendums that you hate kids and you want them to die in a gutter somewhere Hmm. well they're telling you how unimportant the school actually is by the fact that they're like oh there's this event sure you could view it at the school but no we're just going to go go ahead and cancel the school altogether period just like they did during covid where they're like oh there's this thing that kids are going to be totally fine for the most part if they get it oh we must cancel school or make school not an in-person thing for months at a time they always tell you what exactly they what the truth is with their actions not their words okay so here's the interesting part some of the school districts are just no school like indianapolis public schools are saying no school but some of them are saying remote learning day now we all know the remote learning thing is a joke that came out during covid we heard from parents we heard from kids we heard from even people who are just like huge public school advocates so what a joke the remote learning is so you might as well just say we're canceling the school i don't understand I guess that means on some days they'll have assignments they have to do during the day, and depending on which school you go to, which school district you're in, but, but you will I, or won't have assignments. Am that I day. wrong here? The public education system is telling you how irrelevant they actually are by just arbitrarily going, "Okay, you don't have to come this day." Okay, but well, why? They're, well, they're saying part of it has to do with the eclipse time coinciding with the school dismissal. Who cares? In many districts. Kids are not in charge. You know, there's lots of things you don't get to do as a kid that you get to do as an adult. You know, I was thinking about this yesterday. How great 
life was as a kid. And don't you wish, don't you wish, like as some sort of Dickens novel, that I could have been visited in like 1992 by the uh, ghosts of Rob past, present, and future, <laughs> and someone could have laid out to me how charmed an existence you are actually living in the moment of being an 8, 9, 10, 11-year-old kid, mm -hmm. and just how it's not going to get any better. Mm -hmm. And all you're going to get, while there will be many joys, all you're going to experience is more responsibility, less sleep, and, and a general sense of accountability that makes you awake in fear each day. Mm -hmm. So enjoy it while you have it. I don't give two dams about whether the kids get to see the eclipse or not. Why? Because they get everything else. <laughs> Go to school! <laughs> no. They said they're thinking about the dismissal, the students on the buses, kids whose parents have to pick them up, getting stuck in traffic, and that you can't look at the sun. Uh, obviously, parents are going to be responsible for making sure that their kids wear the solar eclipse glasses so wait, wait, to protect wait, wait, their wait, wait, eyes. Wait, 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 wait. So they're concerned about people having to pick their kids up from school, yet they think it would be more convenient for a working parent to have to find child care for the entire day. Mm -hmm. That's their theory. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're very concerned about the time and to pick the kid up. So we're just going to make you have to find child care for your kid the entire damn day. Yep. Exposure to the sun without proper protection can permanently damage your eyes, retina. We're going to speak to an expert on this, by the way, on Friday. I don't believe you. You've been threatening this for a week. <laughs> no, we're totally going to do it. Speaking of kids in school, School, I wanted to uh, reveal the popular slang words that are now being considered uncool. See if any of these are on your list. This was made by uh, some eighth graders, okay? And these wait, are wait, wait, words. Wait. Just like some random eighth graders? Um, no, they're. Uh, it's from a special district oh. from the Spring Branch Middle School. What, what does that tell me? Like, why, why are we? Well, you asked. Why are we validating this? Uh, <laughs> Kat, why don't you make some stuff up and we'll just do a whole segment on that? Well, I just want to know if you're using any of these words. Oh, these are the. I, I can assure you, you I'm know, not. We're, we're trying to we're trying to help our listeners uh -huh. uh, communicate with their children, right? Yeah, right. So if you're saying these words, uh, according to these eighth graders, you're no longer uh -huh. cool. Some random eighth graders yeah. from Sally Springs Elementary School. Right, yes. from that school. Yeah. Uh, the word "sus" is out. The what? What? Sus. Oh. You know that's short for suspect. Oh, it is. I didn't know that. Yeah, never yeah. use that one anyway. Yeah. No. Okay. How about the word "cap"? Which means, you know, no cap no means cap, you're not yeah. lying. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. No, yeah, that no one. cap means you're not lying. Yeah, but you don't use that word anymore. Right. Why, wouldn't, no why cool. wouldn't you just say that? Why would you? What, what? <laughs> it doesn't because sound as cool. slang words. What is um, this picture, like, remember the Seinfeld episode where George uh, tries to act like he's part of the Van Buren boys and mm -hmm. he's given the signal and they're like, that's not the signal. <laughs> that's and he's not like, it. hey, where, where was it was when I was banging? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, YOLO is another word. That is you only live once. Yes. Yeah. See, you know the slang. Yeah. Don't use that anymore. Oh, That's okay. not cool. Well, uh, that will be, I'll put that right in. I haven't been using it, period. So. When you say something is lit... Oh, that's you know? not like on fire. Oh, yeah, out. like on fire yeah. or cool. That's uh -huh. that's not. Yeah, that's out. Sure. Something is hype. Uh, uh, dime is out. I don't know what, what that it, one means. Kev? Do you know what that dime? Means? Like yeah. a dime piece? No, like you're. I don't know. We don't know. Well, this is Isn't your world. That an attractive woman. What? Oh, okay. Is that what that means though? I think so. That's been around for a long time though. It's out. Don't use that anymore. Cringe is out. <laughs> oh. And also a sleigh. So we're going to take okay. the advice of a bunch of random eighth graders from a school that you can't even identify where it's at or why we would care about what they <laughs> yeah, say. Location is important. Why you did these so? Why did these eighth graders get to decide what's cool and what's not? They it's it's trending. They did a thing. They're just you know they they put it together and yeah. it, it went viral. Kev. You're you're the only one here. 16,800 16, people. You're the only uh, what? Sixteen thousand eight? What? Yeah, it, they put it out. You're just on, throwing numbers no, out. No, you're no, just they, like Biden at this point. You're putting just words and sentences. Billion that don't even, trillion. Yeah, uh, uh, sixteen thousand eight hundred. No, they put it out on social media and oh. they got over sixteen thousand. Oh, very good. Oh, okay. so now we're going on social media comments. Yeah. Okay, Kev, you're you're the only one here that's remotely social anymore with like random people. Do you use any of these words in regular conversation? Not really, but I was looking at the ones that are cool, mm -hmm. and I actually use most of those words, such as. So I'm as cool as these eighth graders. Like you what? Think so? Give me one. Do you well, know what was one of them? Uh, low key. Low key. No, not that one. Wasn't beef on there? Beef is on like here. Like I've got a beef with Rob. Yep. Or or <laughs> ick. Is, no, is I, cool. I never use that. Uh, you get the ick from someone. Oh, uh, yeah. No shade. No shade. What's that mean? Uh, well, I know if you throw shade, oh, yeah. there's no shade, right? I don't use that. Uh, high key is no. in. That's weird. Okay. I say that all the time. This That's is really weird. annoying. Can we just enjoy Bob Seger as we go to the break? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's Kendall Lee Casey on 93 WIBC.
According to a 2023 Gallup poll, 71% of non-retired adults are worried about retirement saving. At Howard Bailey Financial, we don't believe retiring with confidence should be guesswork. In fact, our mission is to help you gain clarity and purpose and elevate meaning in your life through personal and practical financial strategies. That's why we provide our Retire with Purpose Toolkit at no cost. In it, you'll find valuable information on minimizing taxes, maximizing Social Security, and building a retirement income you won't outlive. To receive your complimentary toolkit, text CLARITY to 866-482-9559. Take a step toward a more confident retirement with Howard Bailey Financial and text CLARITY to 866-482-9559. This endorsement was not provided by a client of Howard Bailey. This individual was compensated for this endorsement. For more information, visit howardbailey.com slash TS1. He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger is a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right. That's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body, to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerative me all natural and that's what i'm about i'm gonna tell everybody why i'm better oh and by the way it looks like the competitive satch is back we're all in the same boat and i'm getting better and i'm watching them stay old go to qckinetics.com get relief and your game back call for your complimentary consultation call qc kinetics 317-559-pain that's 317-559-pain 317-559-pain The regular season is winding down, but the energy inside Game Bridge Fieldhouse is revved up. Halliburton tries another three. Bang! Tyrese Halliburton for downtown. Pacer fans, we need you to bring your intensity and passion down the home stretch and make your impact jump every game. Step back three. Tyrese got it. Uh Your Pacers meet the best from the West in a Friday night matchup with the Thunder. Get your tickets at Pacers.com. Pacers, Thunder, Friday at 7. Wealth changing question. Are you keeping as much of your investment gains as possible? High taxes can erode returns quickly, so you need a tax optimized portfolio. At Creative Planning, our money managers and specialists work together to make sure your portfolio and wealth are managed in a tax efficient manner. It's what you keep that really matters. Why not give your wealth a second look? Book your free meeting today at creativeplanning.com. Creative Planning, a richer way to wealth. What if the next time you painted your home was the last time you painted your home? Our Rhino Shield has been on for eight years. Rhino Shield. Call 888-RHINO-41. Don't paint, don't vinyl. Go Rhino! Coming up in two minutes, where a shooting left a man dead on the east side overnight. Plus, Donnie Burgess reports on why a cop is no longer a cop here in Indy and how the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is capitalizing on the solar eclipse. That and more coming up from the Technology Recycler Studios after Fox News Radio. You're listening to 93 WYBC, WYBC HD1, Indianapolis. It's 10 o'clock. Roofs torn off, power lines snapped, trailers tipped over. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. There is storm damage throughout the Ohio River Valley and parts of the southeast. More than 100,000 power outages are reported in West Virginia. Storms hit Georgia. Tornado watches are expiring in the Atlanta area, though storms through the night and early morning may have spawned more than one tornado in Rockdale County, including the city of Conyers, east of Atlanta. Trees are down, roads are in need of clearing. And thousands of power customers are reportedly in the dark with crews rushing to repair lines and restore service. Tornadoes were identified by radar, though the National Weather Service needs to confirm them and their strength. Much of the Atlanta metro and surrounding area is still enduring rain and risks of flash flooding. Eben Brown, Fox News. Special Counsel Jack Smith is asking the judge overseeing former President Trump's classified documents case to remove from potential jury instructions the idea that Trump could have claimed the records as personal property under the Presidential Records Act. Last month, Judge Eileen Cannon requested proposed jury instructions from attorneys in the case taking the former president's claim at face value. Smith says it's pure fiction to suggest that highly classified documents can be designated private property. The Trump campaign and Republican National Committee report raising $65.6 million last month with 
$93 million cash on hand. We have seen President Biden with a huge cash advantage when it comes to fundraising, but so far it's not translated to an advantage in the polls. The Wall Street Journal took a look at seven different swing states. Let's start in Michigan where Trump was campaigning yesterday. They have seen that Trump is leading by three points. Democrats concerned that Biden's support has slipped there because of the war in Gaza. In Georgia, Trump ahead by one point and Wisconsin, one state where Trump is not leading the race is tied. Trump was there last night. Biden's going to visit the state next week to talk about the economy. Fox's Mark Meredith. The bodies of six foreign aid workers killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza have been moved to Egypt to be returned to their home countries. America's listening to Fox News. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. It was one of a couple shootings. Radar is clear. It's 40 degrees and cloudy downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 10.02. A man shot and killed at a home along LaSalle Street this morning. It was on the east side. And police there say that it isn't much to known yet about what led to the shooting, just that they found a man dead with a gunshot wound inside the home. It's not clear if they're looking for any suspects either. A former Indianapolis cop accused of rape and official misconduct while on duty. Donnie Burgess reports. Myron Howard is accused of going back to the scene of a domestic violence call January 6 and raping the victim of that original call, say investigators. Howard is also accused of offering a woman a car ride home in exchange for sex last August. That woman had just been in a car accident, and investigators say all of this happened while Howard was on duty. IMPD Chief Chris Bailey fired Myron Howard in March, and he was taken into custody Tuesday. Donnie Burgess, 93 WIPC Mobile News. A couple tornadoes hit southern Indiana yesterday, one in Evansville during a morning round of storms. Another is said to have touched down near Jeffersonville and then crossed the Ohio River into Kentucky. Indiana's Republican candidate for governor, Eric Doden, who is one of a few, vows to prevent a projected $1 billion Medicaid budget shortfall if elected. So if you put a cap on it, then you still can protect the vulnerable, but you also don't have the potential shortfall. I think going back to the big picture, you know, our goal as a state government should be to protect the vulnerable and then make sure that we have a responsible budget. He also says there is a housing crisis throughout the state. The solar eclipse is an opportunity for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so says President Doug Bowles. Of those 40,000 people we, we expect to be here, 75% of them have never been to the Speedway before, so it's a brand new customer, somebody that's never seen the Speedway, so it's a great opportunity. He says they have a fun-filled day planned for Monday, WYBC.com for all the details. Indiana State beat Utah in the Final Four of the NIT on Tuesday. Final score 100 to 90 they will face seton hall in the championship game on thursday inside hinkle Fieldhouse. i'm kirk darling on the level on the go and on wybc.com do you get sinus infections congestion sinus pressure and pain above your eyes below your eyes sinus headaches you've gone to the doctor you have visited urgent care over and over again and it's always the same thing oh uh i know Let's try antibiotics and nasal sprays. But the sinus infections keep coming back. The good news? Relief is possible. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of Indianapolis Sinus Center called balloon sinuplasty. Imagine the relief of not having to deal with your sinus infections anymore. Set an appointment today with Indianapolis Sinus Center and find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Call 317-528-9650. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. <laughs> You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, five minutes after 10. This is the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIBC. My name is Casey Daniels. That is Rob Kendall. And let's talk about the debate, right? Six Republican gubernatorial hopefuls. They've got one more chance to make their case before the May 7th primary. The Indiana Debate Commission has uh, open tickets to the free April 23rd event. Okay, so it's April the 23rd? Mm-hmm. Have, okay. Have have six people collectively ever 
more underwhelmed you in your entire life? <laughs> All six collectively. I mean, what at are, the same time? What What are the odds that you could take six human beings? I mean, they they desire. You're not taking six people off the street. You're taking six people who desire public office. Mm -hmm. They desire to spend their lives in front of the public, and collectively, I mean, my goodness, we have. Look, the diversity debate that we did is the only thing that's been remotely interesting in this entire race so far. Six people. And mm -hmm. it took the radio station pointing out the hypocrisy of the Republican Party kicking the two black people off the stage and having a little fun with the diversity debate to even be remotely interesting. How is that even possible? Well, and here's the thing. They're going to have all six of them there for this one. So everybody was invited this time. The but rules must be a little bit more lenient. Isn't the moderator like some PBS or mm -hmm. FYI guy or yeah, something? Yeah, it's oh my uh, goodness. Indiana Lawmakers PBS's oh, host. No. Yeah, he's going to moderate the debate. It's going to be live before an audience, and it takes place from 7 until 8.30 at Hein Hall Auditorium on IUPUI campus and uh so they're saying that the doors are going to open at six so what they're giving they're giving away tickets yeah they're giving they're free is this some sort of lethal lottery type of thing where yeah. like you do what do you have to get a ticket like do you do you get a drawing or are they just throwing the tickets at people going please take these what are they doing um, you know what? I don't know how you get your tickets. It doesn't You're supposed say. to be in charge of the story, Casey. <laughs> Come on now. You got to be in your seat by 6:45 though. And just like the diversity debate, Rob, that you were participating yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can't have signs or other campaign paraphernalia <laughs> if you're an audience <laughs> member. Okay. So, it's, You can submit questions online too. This is Oh boy, I'm going to totally just throw a bunch out there and let's see if one of them gets picked. Um, okay, so it's April the 23rd. That means it'll be, what is that? That's like two weeks before early voting. Most people have made up their mind by then, haven't they? Or is this a thing where people are going to go collectively, you all are so boring that we don't know and we won't make our minds up until we go We go in there? I bet they'll fill it. I mean, people will want to go. Yeah, they'll but I'm saying see. voting. I mean, there's enough political nerds who will want to have a nice nap that, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> to say they were involved, I went. No, especially if they submit a question. You have to go over to Ticketmaster and submit your name, and then I think it's a digital Kevin, ticket. if I offered you $50, like I said, Kevin, here's $50, would you subject yourself to this? Would you? Is there any possible scenario where you would put yourself through seeing these six people for an hour and a half? I, I would be kind of interested. Would you? I would probably check out after about a half hour. Thank you very much, yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you okay, let's think about this. Because I got offered tickets to the last one, and I didn't go, and here is my reasoning. Okay, first of all, I, I don't, none of them inspire me really at all. I mean, I'm, I I probably will vote for Rittenauer in protest, but that's a protest vote. Not totally 100% sure yet, but probably just based on how poorly she was treated as an, and as a middle finger to the state party, I'll probably just vote for her. But, like, I, I already know that none of them have put anything forward that is going to dramatically improve my life. They're boring. Mm -hmm. um, and so why would, by the time you got to, I mean, you can't just show up. Like the way I'm dressed now, you got to like put on clothes that fit. You got to like probably wear a tie to one of these things. I mean, you're looking at an hour probably to get ready. Then you got it. Where's it at? Is it but is it where's the where's the debate at? It's at Hein Hall. Oh, OK. All right. IUPUI. IUPUI. So I got to drive all the way downtown. I got to find a place to park. There's another hour out of my day. So now I'm two hours in. I got it. You can't just show up. It's you know, it's not like a movie where you can just walk in right before the opening credits roll. You probably got to be there 30 minutes early. There's another 30 minutes. Then You got to deal with whatever this is an hour, an hour and a half of them. And then it takes forever to get out of there. And then every time I go somewhere, it's all the people of, oh, I love the show. Blah, 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 blah. And then, and then, so now I'm seven hours into this thing. It's just not <laughs> worth it to me. Well, that seems a little bit apathetic of you. Well, I can watch it on TV. Is well, this one? Will this be on TV? I, I assume it'll, it'll be, be on streamed somewhere. It'll be on PBS, maybe. But what difference does it make? The what are they going to offer me at this point, Casey, on April the 23rd? That you don't already that know. I, have not, I mean, they've had, what is it? Th they've had three debates so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. They've had. Doden and Doden's been campaigning. Some of these guys have been campaigning for a year or more. What are they suddenly just going to whip something out at the well, end? Where it's like, well, it? that's new. What was it? Forty-two percent of voters are undecided. Pretty a large amount. Yeah. So I think this is an event that those undecided people can go to. Really? Yeah. Do you, if you, because maybe it's one last chance to help you decide. What are they there with a like a notepad? I mean, come on! Like this has been a shame on other than Rittenauer, mm -hmm. and she's been somewhat interesting. Now, if they were all as interesting as she'd been, if like collectively, not that she has been super interesting, but if they were just as moderately interesting as Rittenauer, and we combined them all together, then we might have had something worth what six people casey mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. and there other than her there's not a pulse amongst any of them and are you really going to get the answers that you want with six of them on stage no you're not 
And this is so, why I would have split them up. Like, why don't we? This is what I don't understand. Maybe they're t time constraints or whatever. But why don't we split them up? Like three of them on stage together, and then three of them on stage together. Mm -hmm. Then you actually get to ask questions, and you get answers, and you get back and forth. And I mean, Braun is probably going to win. He's going to win having nailed not be nailed down to any concrete policy positions. He clearly doesn't know what he's voted for in the past based on that nonsensical, ridiculous answer about the gas tax that mm -hmm. he didn't appear not to know it goes up every year. So what are we going to get out of, out of Mike Braun when he's governor? What I mean, McCormick's a joke. She's not going to challenge him. Rainwater doesn't have the money to put any sort of sort of serious dent into into Braun. So he's going to he's going to cruise in with no accountability whatsoever. And then what? And then people next year are going to be right back here bitching about how nothing got changed or nothing got fixed. And then uh, we'll say, well, we tried to tell you. And then they'll just scream at us for pointing out the obvious. Okay, well, if you don't have the time to go to the live debate, which you can submit questions to, you could go to Indiana Capital Chronicle because they have been sending questions to the candidates and asking for their answers in 150 words or less. Oh. And then they're publishing their answers. And this time, the questions were all about property Taxes. Oh, how exciting. The question was, property taxes continue to be a major issue for homeowners. What mm -hmm. major changes would you support? Oh. And then all of the candidates submitted their answers. Now, let me guess. I'm just going to take a stab at this because I have heard the nonsensical jibber-jabber from these people for mm -hmm. a very long time. Uh -huh. Now, remember, most of these people, when they started, and by most, I think almost every single one of them, mm -hmm. didn't want to address property taxes at all. At all. Not one of these people walked in with a concrete plan for property taxes, which meant they don't give a damn about it at all, and they don't actually care, and they're not actually going to do anything mm -hmm. because it's not a priority for them. They've done it kicking and screaming, and they put these mealy-mouthed, wimpy, half-baked proposals out there, by the way, that you can't pin them down on, so whatever they do, they, you won't be able to say, well, you said. Um, but only because of the overwhelming, I mean, talk about total disconnect from you, the taxpayer, to them, the politician, the number one issue and the only people who have plans have done it kicking and screaming, and none of them really actually help everyone. So let me take a guess. Let me take a guess on most of these, right? Because okay. um, I've heard Tony ask this question to, the, to these candidates on his video uh, forum thing that he he did, and, and most of the answers have been laughable. I bet they all have said something in the lane of we want to do something to try to help the old people. Uh, well, you know what? Yeah, actually, let me see here. Can I go down in order what sure, they have absolutely, their answers? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so property taxes continue to be a major issue for homeowners. Yes. What major everyone, changes would you support? Yes, yes, yes. So here's Mike Braun's answer. As governor, one of my top priorities is looking at solutions and working with the General Assembly to stop, fix the problem. Stop, 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 stop. He's looking at it. Mm -hmm. See, the, so, so what are we doing here? If he's looking at it, that means you're two years away from anything if he decides he wants to feel gracious enough to help you. If there, if someone tells you they are still looking at something, mm -hmm. looking is code for I'm not going to do anything about it. He said every option uh, that reduces property taxes will be reviewed. So that's his answer. <laughs> oh, we're going to review it, Casey. Mm -hmm. So what? So when government speak, it's two years before there's even a plan. Then, of course, it's going to take another year to vote on the plan and get the watered-down version of whatever the plan is through. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about three years before any help at all if Mike Braun is elected governor. Yep. Uh, so let's go to Suzanne Crouch. Same question. She said, I voted for the largest property tax cut in our state's history. I'm open to reforming and reducing Hoosier's property tax burden. Okay, time out, time out, time out, time out. Let's, let's stop with this, because she does this all the time, and this is the new thing that, sh that Silent Suzanne's doing that's pissing me off. She is... <laughs> she has pivoted mm -hmm. off supporting the large. This isn't this interesting. So she obviously supported the largest tax increase in the history of the state mm -hmm. based on that. She was cheerleading the gas tax increase when Holcomb was governor. She's lieutenant governor. So her pivot to our show, because our show, we coined the phrase largest tax increase in the history of the state. Her pivot to that is not to own her baggage. Her pivot to that is I voted for and listen to the word she's using largest tax decrease in the history of the state. Now, let's remind everybody that it took people literally Storming the state house, Casey. People, there is video, there are photographs, there are people waving signs, there are flags. People were literally storming the state house out of out of control property taxes, brought on in part by Suzanne Crouch. So she air quote fixed, which she didn't actually fix because we still have the problem. She air quote fixed the problem she helped create, and now she's trying to take credit for that. Yep, she said she's open to reforming and reducing Hoosier's property tax burden, but uh, she also is the only candidate to fight to eliminate 
Indiana's individual income tax. She's such so a So she's also pivoting she's to the so income full tax. Of it. <laughs> uh, Eric Doden, he said, uh, I support strengthening property tax caps for seniors. Oh! And limiting the property tax burden for Hoosier homeowners. So apparently, if you're an old person, we care about you. But if you're a middle class person where both parents are working and maybe you're trying to raise a couple of kids, you can just eat crap and die. Thank you, Eric Doden. He Thank said, you. Hoosiers who are over 65 should be able to stay in their homes. This will give <laughs> seniors peace of mind. Kick rocks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we get to Jamie Rittenauer, and uh, she says first, eliminating property tax for senior citizens' homesteads. Their fixed incomes can't keep up with assessment increases what about my fixed income lady what about my <laughs> fixed income they act like i'm gordon gecko over here and nobody cares at all about this is in maddening that they're like we've got to protect the seniors how about you protect everyone see this is why nothing will get done casey this is why nothing will get done because they don't actually mean it they're grasping at straws they're placating they're pandering and you have to blow up the entire system the system is broke the system is that you have an un you have a, a non-fiscal agent in this case, the county assessor, raising people's taxes. That doesn't make any sense to anyone. Why you would let a non-fiscal agent raise your tax? It is the system that is broken. Jamie Rittenauer says that she'll coordinate with all 92 counties about their base taxes, referendum taxes, budgetary efficiency, and how their spending has changed with increases over the years. She says she'll set budget baselines, determine the impact of each property tax phase-out, and quantify the state assistance each locality uh, you don't even she, know what she, that's just words. Yeah. Again, it's Biden gibberish. It's words yeah. that don't, and I like Jamie. She's very nice, but that is nonsensical gibberish. <laughs> what, who else? Do, what, what other underachievers um, are still on the board? Let me see. Uh, Brad Chambers <laughs> says through strategic planning and a growing of oh, our economy. Strategic planning. We'll bring in new inbound revenues and oh. resources, and that can lower taxes across the board while not sacrificing key programs. Isn't it wild that the whole, and uh, look, Chambers is, Holcomb, and at least to Chambers' credit, he's totally hitched his wagon to Holcomb. And if you like Holcomb, vote for vote for Chambers because it's the same guy. But isn't it weird how everything with all these people, the plan on any tax reduction is growth in revenue to the Treasury? Mm -hmm. Not one of them is proposing concrete cuts to government. None of the cuts to pr taxes of any sort come out of cuts to government. They will all, all, every single one of them will grow the government. This is interesting because Curtis Hill actually uh, says something that he should have been saying on the debate stage. Yeah. He says, our plan takes a measured approach to immediately provide relief to Hoosiers struggling to make ends meet. We will slash the Mike Braun gas tax, <laughs> cut the corporate income tax, and eliminate the income tax on young earners and entrepreneurs. But nothing about property taxes. No. Yeah. Man, you people should all be ashamed of yourselves. This has been so disappointing. I thought we were going to have so much fun with this this year, Casey. I thought we got six people running. Mm -hmm. We got uh, kind of variety. But I don't know. It's uh, well, it's just been as usual. I get I get nothing out of this other than higher taxes and bigger government. It's Kendall and Casey on ninety three WIBC. Like magic, it appears in the sky. A rainbow. Somewhere, Somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams. Hidden behind that beauty is trouble. Get a cone tornado right there. Don't be fooled. Tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornado on the ground. Confirmed tornadoes. Oh my gosh, look at it. Oh my god. This spring, depend on your severe weather station. Baseball size hill. 93 WIPC. Shades of red, white, and blue Guarding dreams for all He believes in you Raju Chinthala is a healthcare professional A successful businessman And a community leader with experience Raju is ready to be your next congressman in the 5th district Raju for you Raju, Raju Shades of red, white, and blue Raju is a family man ready to represent your family with Hoosier values. And he's a man of action, ready to get things done. Vote for Raju Chinthala, Republican 5th District Congress. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue. Guarding dreams for all, he believes in you. I'm Raju Chinthala, and I approve this message. Paid for by Raju for Congress. 
Tony Katz here for Premier Arms in Brownsburg. This is your Premier Gun Store. Premier Arms has the experience and know-how to help the new gun buyer and the most experienced marksman. They've been in business for over 20 years and have a friendly, knowledgeable staff that wants to help you, not talk down to you. Premier Arms in Brownsburg is family-friendly, so bring the kids. All ages are welcome. Everyone can find what they're looking for at Premier Arms in Brownsburg, 3754 South Green Street, online at premierarms.com. Tell them Tony Katz sent you, premierarms.com. Do you find yourself stuck in a timeshare? Get the real facts about the timeshare industry and your options for cancellation. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has put together a free information guide that reveals the secrets the timeshare industry doesn't want you to know, including the five ways to get rid of your timeshare. Call now and get this timeshare information guide absolutely free. Call 800-919-3200. That's 800-919-3200. 800-919-3200. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, see their large selection of grills, Weber, Traeger, and Napoleon, along with the Big Green Egg. Tired of hearing Rob talk about all the bad news? Time to find your happy place. Turn that frown upside down. It's time for Shining Rainbows with Rob. All right, you railed on the governor candidates long enough. It's time for some good news. Uh, Yes, so last night was the, uh, I guess you'd call them the semifinals of the NIT, Mm -hmm. which is super cool this year, the NIT taking place at Hinkle Fieldhouse at Butler. Yeah. And um, uh, normally in Madison Square Garden in New York, I don't know exactly why it got moved out of scheduling conflict or whatever, but it is at Butler University. And Indiana State uh, is was is playing in the in the NIT, and mm-hmm. they beat the crap out of Utah last night. What was the score? One hundred to ninety. I think one hundred to ninety was the final. Yeah. And um, so, a good day if you were an over better. I think one sixty one and a half was the over uh, going in. So you made that with relative ease. But I, look, I, w- I will say this: the Indiana State team is by far the most entertaining team in the entire state of Indiana to watch. It's not even close. And the personality, not a, just of Larry Nerd or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or whatever we're calling him, but the entire team has just a ton of personality. And it is so cool as someone who very briefly in my existence went to Indiana State, mm-hmm. in many ways grew up in and around Terre Haute, to see uh, Indiana State um doing very well and see the excitement of the fans and they had a ton of people there making the trip from Terre Haute or various other areas to central Indiana yesterday um, so it was very very cool to see Indiana State win it was very very cool to see the uh, Larry Nerd play very well <laughs> and uh, we need more characters in our society and I just think it's phenomenal that uh, that Indiana State is that and they're doing very, and they totally should have been I mean it's laughable like if you look at the NCAA committee and you're like, y- you wanted Virginia, who scored mm-hmm. nine points in their game, mm-hmm. in over these guys? Like, right. what 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 are we doing here? And the final for the NIT, is, by the way, is going to be uh, Seton Hall against Indiana State, yep. which are the two teams that everybody kind of said got screwed getting into the NCAA tournament. So they're the ones that are going to the championship yeah. game. That's a, that's a little bit uh, symmetrical, I think. So what, that game is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Okay, so... Um, uh, one other thing I did want to Again mention. Again at Hinkle Field. Yes, that's right. Um, one thing I did also, also that I did want to mention, um, in the middle of the game, they had Bobby Plump on the broadcast. And, of course, Bobby Plump is the guy who, uh, for Milan, hit the shot that won the state championship. Mm-hmm. Of, well, didn't they have the whole team out there in the beginning? Well, I'm just saying on the actual broadcast itself, he okay. was like, you know, midway through the first half, they had him come on, and he probably spent five minutes on there with them. And, and – uh, he is the guy that the movie Hoosiers is, and that their team is what movie Hoosiers is based on. The Jimmy Chitwood character is somewhat based on Bobby Plump. And he's 88 years old now. Mm-hmm. Eight of the 12 guys from that team are still living, which is amazing, yeah. given how old they actually are. And I was just listening to him talk, and I was thinking, you know, we often don't appreciate people that have are kind of like state or local treasures until... They're no longer with us anymore. And then when they're gone there, you're like, oh, man, it'd be so cool if, if we could have that person back. It's like the Pacers broadcast. Obviously, the fan runs the Pacers games. Mm-hmm. And Mark Boyle's still a phenomenal play-by-play broadcaster. Not the same 
not the same without Slick Leonard. I mean, it's just not, you know, it's like the E Street Band without Clarence Clemens. It's still the same thing, but it's not the same thing, right? And Bobby Plump was talking last night, and I'm watching this. I was over at my dad's house, and we were watching this, and it's like, this dude is a legit state treasure who we are still very blessed that is functioning at a very high level mm-hmm. at 88 years old. Mm-hmm. Ke- ke- you know, coherent thoughts. He's quick. He was keeping up with the broadcast. He's, you know, telling these stories. Right. And I was just thinking, what a what a phenomenal ambassador to have that guy who went to Butler to be there at that, talking about what Indiana high school basketball was. And we are just so lucky that that guy is still alive, still functioning. And he has a bar or a restaurant called yeah, uh, Plum's Last Shot. Have you been there? Yeah, I actually went there last month. Yeah, so I guess it's... Did you take a last shot there? I did not, actually. I should have. So they have all sorts of, like, memorabilia on the walls and things like that? Yeah, they've like got, that. like, the Hoosiers movie poster yeah. that's signed. Mm-hmm. And they uh, yeah have excellent... It's in Broad Ripple, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, Broad Ripple-esque area. Yeah, Cornell Avenue, yeah. 6416. And it's one of these little, you know, side street dealios. It's a yeah. it's a house, as many of the side street dealios in Broad Ripple are, that's been turned into a, a restaurant. And I was thinking, we've, I've got to, like, go to that at mm-hmm. some point. Um, so since you're super wealthy, I'm volunteering you right. to buy us all lunch at Plum's Last Shot one okay. day. Yeah, get us a tenderloin. They have excellent <laughs> tenderloins there. Is this, is it a, a, a breaded tenderloin, though? Breaded tenderloin, yeah. I'm yeah. sure it is. So there you go. Okay. Two positive things. That you was know, excellent. Well, thank you. Um, you know what else is positive? What? It's the news yeah. with Kurt Darling. It's coming up from 93 WIBC. Kate here from Bads R Us with the three biggest problems people always have with bathroom remodelers and how Bads R Us overcomes them all. First, it takes too long. Everyone's heard the horror stories of jobs that drag on for weeks or months. But at Baths R Us, we're in and out in two or three days, and it looks stunning. Problem number two, the final bill is more than the original estimate. Baths R Us doesn't give estimates. We give ironclad quotes. We remodel over 1,500 bathrooms a year. You can be confident there will be no last-minute surprises. And problem number three, they don't do the job right. Baths R Us only hires master craftsmen who are trained and certified and who use the highest quality materials. That's why we're proud to offer our no regrets promise, your personal guarantee that you'll love your new bathroom. Call right now and get $1,500 off plus low to no monthly payments. Our number is 317-886-1761 or online at bathsrus.com. That's bathsrus.com. JMV here for Sundown Gardens and Miss M's Home and Garden. Both nurseries receiving new loads of new inventory now. So as the weather warms, it's a great time to shop for plants and get your spring beds ready. This week at Sundown and Miss M's, get 20% off spring interior decor in the garden shop. Both shops on full display. Live North, Sundown Gardens, 186 and Spring Mill Road, sundowngardens.com. Live South, Miss M's Home and Garden on State Road 135, just south of Whiteland Road, Miss M's Home and Garden.com. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Having health insurance is important. So, if you or anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check your mail for a renewal form from your state. Complete the form and mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose Medicaid or CHIP, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Keep your family covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 93 WIPC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. Hearing from both sides. It's 40 degrees and cloudy downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 1030. Arguments being heard today in a federal appeals court over the controversial Texas immigration law, which has been held up in legal battles. It's spurring more Republican outcry for the White House to do something about the border and illegal immigration. Joe Biden lets it happen. He could stop it on his own today with his own with his own pen that he signs all those executive orders with. 
but he won't because he wants this to happen, and families are fed up with it. Congressman Steve Scalise, the law allowed police in Texas to arrest people suspected of being in the country illegally, which the federal government says it has the sole authority to do. A magnitude 7.4 earthquake has killed nearly a dozen people in Taiwan and left over 900 injured. It's the strongest earthquake to hit the island in 25 years. There are more billionaires now than ever before. That's according to a new Forbes list of the world's richest people that shows nearly 2,800 billionaires around the world. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WYBC.com. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Pendleton Pike. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors. So come celebrate on Wednesday, April 10th at 8101 Pendleton Pike, Suite E in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-648-5581 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com. Hey guys, it's Rob from my friends at Life Church, and over the years, many WIBC listeners have found a home at Life Church. And you know it's Wednesday, which means Sunday's going to be here before you know it. So this Sunday, if you are looking for a new church home or even a first church home, if you're looking for something different, why not give Life Church a try? They would love the opportunity to meet and welcome you and your family, and they've got campuses all across central Indiana, including Noblesville, Fishers, Eagle Creek, and Pendleton, in addition to incredible online services. You can learn more about everything at lifechurchin.com. Indy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at indiedecorativeconcrete.com. That's indiedecorativeconcrete.com. You're listening to the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. It's time to hear from you. Kendall and Casey present voicemails. Brought to you by QC Kinetics for non surgical regenerative medicine treatments at 317 559 Pain. Voicemail line 317 684 8444. It is the Kendall and Casey show on 93 WIBC. Uh, during the commercial break, Kev was doing his best uh, Ray Kinsella impression from uh, Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. I don't know even how we got on this, but uh, oh, because we were talking about Plump's last shot and we were talking about the changing landscape of Broad Ripple. And so, if you've ever seen the movie Field of Dreams, you know the whole premise is like the Kevin Costner character keeps doing these things to bring people's childhood dreams to light like one last opportunity whether it's you know the the uh uh moonlight graham to mm -hmm. finally play in the majors or joe jackson to come back and play one more game or terrence mann to go to a, you know a, a baseball game and, and kev was talking to me he goes like what was it like when you were a young man in broad ripple <laughs> when was the last time you had a good night he's, out in he's, broad that's ripple. What he goes when was the last time you had a good solid night out in broad ripple and i said i don't know maybe like 2015 or early 2016 he goes someone should do that for you again <laughs> like, like, like there's a voice from the corn except it's coming from kilroy's ease my pain and go the distance ease his pain yeah, those bars are calling your name uh -huh. set up a babysitter <laughs> It's cool. It's cool. Uh, sorry. You, need, you need a good night out. It's just Is that made, what you're saying? Just, just made just how concerned Kevin was. You, uh, you, instead of a good home cooked meal, Kevin's like, <laughs> "You need a good night out of solid drinking." Yeah, you need <laughs> therapy. That's, you you need, that's that's therapy <laughs> for you. Uh huh. Okay, so uh, you have I, I I don't know what you've done, but uh -oh. you have touched quite a few people with your Purdue comments. Oh, the the Purdue. No, here's how we have we have uh, gauged the Purdue thing. Thankfully, the overwhelming amount of Purdue fans are mm -hmm. good, decent, reasonable people mm -hmm. who recognize that they would view <laughs> IU in the exact same manner as I view Purdue, mm -hmm. and they're capable of having good fun with it, and they're capable of laughing about it, and we give them a forum to call, and we chuckle. But there, man, I'll tell you what. There are some Purdue... I've said this all week long, and I've said this for the last couple of weeks. The Purdue people, like I'm talking about like the, the you know, the infallible Mr. Edie people mm -hmm. are some of the softest, most snowflakey, most insecure people I have ever <laughs> met, Casey. It's basketball. And we are led to believe that they're sitting around going, oh, I would totally be on just just pins and needles if I, yeah, you were in this position. Oh, give me a break. This is Boilermaker Brian. Rob, you can bite me. 
<laughs> there you go. I mean, isn't it? You know, we talk about this hammer. It's laughable <laughs> that they're like, "Oh, if I you were in this position, I would totally be cheering for them." I can't believe it's such it's such poor sportsmanship mm-hmm, on your part. Mm-hmm. Did you know that uh, Purdue center Zach Eady is the most Googled college basketball player? He is the, also the most unentertaining <laughs> college basketball player. I was really disappointed in some of his post game comments when they won the game. He he was using a few inappropriate oh. words. <laughs> well, I just think he needs to represent better. Now, is that going to delay like his I, I ascension to sainthood? Because I know, don't the Purdue people <laughs> at the local West Lafayette Catholic Church, don't mm. they have some sort of petition going? I mean... I get it. His <laughs> adrenaline was going, and he was excited, and he had... You can't use the profanities? I, I, I just, mean, really? Come on, man. Well, like Children I just said... Children are watching. That's it, exactly. He was the most Googled basketball player right, over sure. 500,000 searches people want to know more about him and i would hate for some internet thing to pop up and the first thing they see right. of him say bad example is is a, mm. is a bad now, word. now they're going to be mad at you casey because you dared to say that he shouldn't use profanity well i'm just saying uh here's another phone call about purdue hey good morning you're talking about the purdue situation about the people in the state of indiana cheering for it well, I'll have you know that I'm cheering for Purdue, and I would like to see him go all the way and beat the mighty UConn in the uh, NCAA this coming weekend. I'm also cheering for Indiana State. I want to see them do well. Our family runs the gamut. My brother-in-law went to Indiana State and graduated from there. My son graduated from IUPUI in Indianapolis with an IU diploma. My cousins went to Purdue. And the wife and myself, we really don't have a dog in this fight, but we're both products of the University of Indianapolis. But in the meantime, go, go, Purdue. And I certainly hope that uh, mm-hmm. Indiana State can go far in their uh, basketball career and prove those people from NCAA wrong. We're all over the map, but deep down inside, Rob, we're all Hoosiers, and we always cheer for the Hoosiers no matter what type of name they have, whether it be the Bulldogs or it's uh, the Boilermakers mm-hmm. or it's the Ravens mm-hmm. or whatever the name of their team might be. <laughs> okay, so, and I love Southside Tom. He's one of our very loyal listeners. Mm-hmm. However, this is going to be one of those moments where I feel like I say things, and I know the, the words I say get transposed into the masses mm-hmm. because people comment on the things that I've said. However, I think, you know, one of the things our tax dollars could go to that would be behoove everyone in society is a statewide hearing test. <laughs> because sometimes I say things. <laughs> yeah. And it's as though people hear what they want to hear. You heard part of what I said. Yeah. And nowhere in Tom's list of people did he list anyone that I heard that has a degree from Indiana University. Not him, not his wife, who's very lovely, by the way. There is no legitimate hardcore IU fan <laughs> out there who is cheering for Purdue. And if they tell you otherwise, they're either A, lying, mm-hmm. or B, not a hardcore IU fan. If the Green Bay Packers make it to the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. what am I supposed to do? Casey be like, oh, I hope Green Bay does really well. I'm a Bears fan, but man, I just hope both teams play great. Well, that's a little different because you're talking about one team that's from Wisconsin and one team that's from Nobody Illinois. Nobody cares where they're from. Yeah, they're but the he's, talking about, he's talking about the pride within the state of what Indiana. What does that mean? Pride within the state that because they're geographically located in the state of Indiana? Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to just forget all the mean, terrible things <laughs> Purdue people have said over the years. I mean, I love that it is like these Purdue fans or these holier-than-thou just, you know, like nun-esque type people who are in bed at 9 o'clock each night and they do well-wishing prayers for Indiana University before they knit their socks and head to bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Purdue people, and I'm not mad about it. That's how a rivalry works. They have said some of the most mean, vicious, awful things over the years and i ain't mad about it but i'm not going to act like today like oh man i'm so excited about purdue because i'm not well i think it's more about allegiance you have typically when you root for a team it's because you have some sort of allegiance you live near there you went to the school there's a, a star on the team that you you know you like for some reason for example say you're on vacation in oh i don't know let's just pick a random state arizona yeah. right and the game is playing and we're talking maybe even the nit game right indiana state yeah. all of the sudden you may have never had any sort you may have never even been on campus in your life but you're sitting in the middle of arizona and you see this indiana state game 
you're going to take ownership of that team because they're Indiana and you are a Hoosier. Do you get what I'm saying? No, I don't get that at all. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I'm cheering for Indiana State because my parents went there. Because you have an allegiance. Right. Right, but I'm not, like, taking ownership of Indiana State because, oh, my gosh, Indiana State's in Terre Haute, Indiana. Oh, I am doing that because I have a connection to Terre Haute, which I've said. Look, Indiana University. That's what he's doing, though. He's got a connection based on the entire state. But he didn't state. go to IU, Casey. <laughs> I mean, like, you're, you're just trying to jam a square peg into a round hole here. This is not, he has no connection to the rivalry, so he is indifferent. But the reality is, and it's not even close, Indiana is the state school when it comes to basketball. This has been since I was a kid. It was before I was a kid. It was before I was born. Purdue has a very niche audience of hardcore fans, and that's fine. Many, many universities are that way, but it is largely centered around people who either went there or has have a spouse who went there or kids who went there. That is the core of, of Purdue. Indiana, there's hundreds of thousands of IU basketball fans who have no connection to Indiana University whatsoever it's just it's bobby knight it was the you mm -hmm. know state school before that and I, I told you that guy who used to was it was a very prominent radio broadcaster at one point who was just losing his mind yesterday and i'm like dude it'll be okay it's just basketball and i told him i said i would as soon lose every single listener i have than lie to people and go oh my gosh i hope purdue does well purdue's a good team they're probably going to beat the brakes off north carolina state then they're going to get it against UConn, mm -hmm. but they're probably going to win that game. I don't know why, like, and thankfully most people get it and they're having fun with it and it's fine, but there are some Purdue people out there who really need to look themselves in the mirror and go, I am an adult. <laughs> it's just and, a game. And I need to behave as such. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's my obligation to turn you on this, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because you do have a connection now, and your connection is me. No, my connection is I have a diploma from Indiana <laughs> University on my wall, and I grew up loving and watching IU basketball. All right, let's move Whatever on. Whatever poor mistake you allowed your kid to make is not my responsibility. Oh, heck no. You didn't even say that, did you? Poor mistake going to Purdue? Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You're That's... saying it's a poor decision to go to Purdue University. Yes, I absolutely I am. I think she'd be much happier if she had made another choice. But that's her choice, and I don't begrudge you. But, Casey, I'm not going to, like, drop 40 years of allegiance and my own experiences because, well, Casey's daughter is going to Purdue. <laughs> I'm trying. What if I bring you a T-shirt? Will that help? Nothing? Can I light it on fire <laughs> on the show? <laughs> no, but you you cannot say that my daughter made a poor decision by going to well, Purdue. Well, I sure can, Casey, because no, the last time no, I checked, no. this is America. <laughs> oh, boy. Now you're going to get the phone calls, I hope. Okay, one more, <laughs> one more, and this is about your guy, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, how exciting. I just want to say I still love the show. Uh, I was going to mean, mean to call earlier, but I was kind of in, in the hospital having a heart procedure done. <laughs> But I just kind of wanted to get Rob's take on Jeremy Allen White being cast to play Bruce Springsteen in the movie about Nebraska. Anyway, I hope you all have a good day. Bye. Wow, that's amazing. He was having a heart procedure, but still wanted to call the Kendall and Casey show. Thank you for your loyalty. Kev, can you cue up the Larry David the Larry David thing. I'll, yeah. I'll call for that in just a second. Um, yes, so that is the power of this show, right? Like, I mean, we're told nobody listens, but this guy has such a connection to us mm -hmm. that before he has some sort of, I mean, there, there is no minor... <laughs> There's no minor heart transplant for you know, or whatever uh, procedure. So thank you. We hope it went well. We hope you're doing better. So I did see this. There is apparently a movie that's going to be made. Mm -hmm. There was a book that came out. I think we talked about it last year about uh, the 40th anniversary of the Nebraska album that Bruce Springsteen did and what he went through to make and write that album. He traveled the country. The, the central song centers around Charles Starkweather, the famed serial killer. He went to like local libraries in Nebraska to do research. Obviously, that was pre-internet. And they're making a movie, mm -hmm. about like a mainstream Hollywood movie about this. And the guy that they have picked to play him, I don't have any idea who this guy is. He's the guy that I was trying to tell you and Hammer about a few weeks ago. And you you remember the text thread that we had? And I was like, Jeremy Allen White. And you were like, we don't know who this is. He was the guy who was in The Bear, the TV show The Bear. Never seen it. He's nope. the guy who looks like Gene Wilder. Mm -hmm. He was in the Calvin Klein ads in what? his underwear. Do you think I pay attention to dudes in Calvin Klein ads, Casey? Okay, well, that's the same guy. Okay. I was trying to tell you about this guy. So he does look, at least in the photos, they did kind of like 1982 or 81 Bruce Springsteen photo side by side with this guy. Yeah. He would certainly look like him. Yeah. Now, I am going to be very curious how you make a movie about 
a song about an album, an album or an album or a song. Like I don't understand how the plot on this is going to work, and I'm sure I'm going to be underwhelmed. But at least from a looks perspective, he certainly, if you put them side by side, looks. Now, can he play guitar? Can he sing? Can well, he... he's a pretty good actor. So from what I've seen him in the bear, You're, you just like him because he looks good in underwear. That was the first thing out of your mouth. You remember? He's the guy from the underwear, uh, the underwear ad, Rob. He looks good in that. Uh, okay, so Kev sent this to us. Yeah. Do you ever? Had, are you a Curb Your Enthusiasm person? I've I've seen it. I don't watch it regularly. It's not like you know. Uh, now it's on HBO. Is that right? Is it still? Yeah, on it's HBO? on HBO. You love this show. It's one of your the favorites. The Clippy Sentence was fun. Yeah. No, I have been kind of bad about keeping up with this new season, but I just started watching it a couple days. New ago. season, so it went away for a while, right? And then yeah. it came back. There's usually a year or two between each season. Dad and I were talking about this yesterday. Larry David, who was phenomenal, he obviously wrote, put together Seinfeld, etc., which is probably the greatest sitcom mm -hmm. of all time. But man, he is just an insufferable elitist jerk He's as very a human cranky. being. Oh yeah. my gosh! And that's mm -hmm. coming from me. Mm -hmm. But so, Kev, I don't even know the backstory of this, but somehow Bruce Springsteen ended up on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, so there's a episode, a previous episode, where Larry David is in Georgia, and I guess he gives a bottle of water to someone who's standing in line to vote. Oh, my gosh. And I guess that's against the law in Georgia, apparently. Oh, my gosh. And uh, Bruce... Because he's in line to vote. Yeah, yeah, and Bruce hears about this story, and he, he sees Larry as a hero because Larry got arrested for it. And so he wants to meet Larry David, and Larry David's, like, surprised by it. He's like, Bruce wants to meet me? Mm -hmm. And then they end up, he ends up having him over, and, yeah, they're just talking, kind of shooting the breeze. Do we have some of this audio? Yeah, here's a clip from that episode. Ah, uh, Les McCrabb. This guy sent me a manuscript of his book. He asked me if I read it. I said I did. I loved it. And now he's calling me to have an in-depth conversation about it. <laughs> Same thing happened to me. A musician, give me a demo of a band that he liked and thought could go somewhere. I get the tape, I put it on for two seconds, I took it off, I never listened to the rest of it. Who was it? I don't want to say, you know, I mean, we're friends. Who, who, who was it? No, we're friends, I don't want to. Hey, you can I tell me. Plus, come on. Yeah, come on, yeah, come on, boy. This is Don Henley. Don Don Henley. <laughs> and now I'm self-conscious if I get a phone call from him or if I see sure, him somewhere. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would avoid him for the rest of my life. I That's I love that, that the idea that Bruce Springsteen is concerned about any time he has some interaction with Don Henley. Blowing off Don <laughs> Henley. He's going to have to explain <laughs> that he didn't like that band. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Hammer's next. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Casey, question. Yeah. How would you like to get a 13% bonus? When you invest your money. I'd love that. But not only do you get a 13% bonus, Rob, you'll also get an annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Hello, it's Kendall and Casey. Discover how you can get an upfront 13% bonus plus a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. Learn more from the retirement guy we trust, Bill Demery in Indy. Just call 317-932-9912. Yeah, this is such a no-brainer. Right? You get an upfront 13 13% bonus plus a competitive annual return that's averaged 7% a year for the past 10 years. And it's backed by one of the largest insurance companies in the world. So call Bill now, 317-932-9912. 317-932-9912. Past performance is no guarantee of future returns. Hammer and Nigel show, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Nigel is out Chris Hammer will be my co-host. It's the Hammer and Hammer Show. Man, this thing could go sideways real quick. After the news at 3, 93 WIBC. April is here, and with the springtime weather, it's important to have quality windows. If yours won't open to let the fresh air in, won't seal tight to keep out the pollen and the bugs, or had been leaking water all winter, then it's time. You talk to the experts at Window Nation. Right now, for every two windows you buy, you'll get two windows free. There's no limit on how much you could save. Plus, you could save even more with no interest or payments for 24 months. Window Nation's windows come with a lifetime warranty and can be installed in one day or less. Call 866-90-NATION or visit windownation.com. Don't miss out on your chance to afford quality windows with this unlimited buy two, get two free, plus zero interest or payments for 24 months. You cannot afford to wait. 866-90-NATION. Or visit windownation.com. Schedule your free in-home estimate. Window Nation. Tell them Hammer and Nigel sent you. Do you get sinus infections, congestion, sinus pressure and pain? 
above your eyes, below your eyes, sinus headaches. You've gone to the doctor, you've visited urgent care over and over again, and it's always the same thing. Oh, uh, I know. Let's try antibiotics and nasal sprays. But the sinus infections keep coming back. The good news? Relief is possible. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of Indianapolis Sinus Center called balloon sinuplasty. Imagine the relief of not having to deal with your sinus infections anymore. Set an appointment today with Indianapolis Sinus Center and find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Call 317-528-9650. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. Garage Doors of Indianapolis is everything that's right about Central Indiana. They've been locally, family-owned for 50 years, helping our local economy remain strong by employing 70 families. Garage Doors of Indianapolis is proud to do business right here in the great state of Indiana. They're a conservative-minded company that shares our values and stands by their products and services. You can call Garage Doors of Indianapolis today for service today. 875-4577, 875-4577, or visit doorstoday.com. Indiana Pathways for Aging helps Hoosier Medicaid members age 60 and over get support at no additional cost to live life their way. Mom's Parkinson's is progressing, and Pathways provides in-home support so she can be with family every day. Pathways coordinates Medicaid and Medicare services. I'm getting help with meals, personal care, and transportation. One day, I might choose a nursing home, but today, I have options with Pathways. Eligible members can select a plan now. Call 87-PATHWAY-4 or visit in.gov pathways. Head to the contest page at WIBC.com and register to win a pair of tickets to see Andrea Bocelli with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra Saturday, April 13th at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. What I want, you got, it might be hard to handle. He's a legend in the afternoon on this radio station. Jason Hammer joins us on 93 WIBC. Thank you so much, Miss Casey. I want to jump into a conversation you guys were having earlier. I was listening, driving in, and you brought up Bobby Plum. Yeah. Indiana icon, Indiana legend, right? And I started thinking to myself, man, over the last couple of years, we've lost a lot of Indiana legends. Yeah. Bob Knight passed away. Mm -hmm. Slick Leonard passed away. Uh, so I started thinking, man, who is on the list of current Living Indiana legends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm somebody that doesn't throw the word legend right. around loosely here. So, I think Bobby Plump is obviously on that list. He's got to be, doesn't he? I mean, they made a whole movie about him. Right. I mean, the whole vibe of Indiana high school basketball is based around that Milan team. And you're right. It's amazing how many of those guys are still around. Like Ray Kraft, I used to work with at the uh, casino in Shelbyville. I love that so much. He was awesome, man. <laughs> um, how many people knew who he was? Like was it known? Hey, this is a a dude a dude from the team. Staff members like you know myself yeah. and you know my colleagues did, but the average person coming in to play the slot machines had no idea. I love that. But this was a legend, right? <laughs> um, Larry Bird is on the list, mm -hmm. and then after that, boy, I think the pick and start getting slim. Now, are you talking only sports figures, or could this just be? Any category. Any category. Well, Politics, actors, musicians. All right, I got a couple to add to your list, possibly. Okay. David Letterman. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good That's one. That's a real strong one. Yes. Yeah. I would say Michael Jackson, but these have to be living legends. Right. Yeah, so did. would Janet Jackson count? No, because uh, to be a legend, she's not even the most famous Jackson. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. She doesn't, and she doesn't associate with Indi Indiana. Like, there's, you don't think of... You know, Indiana when you think right. of her. At least Michael, back with Jackson 5, I'm mm -hmm. going back to Indiana, yeah. and the house was there and all that kind of stuff. But Letterman's on the list. Totally, yeah, you get one. Yeah, absolutely. What about Mellencamp? Mellencamp, I think, is there. Now, again, we're asking everybody, take their political views out of the equation yeah. here. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a crazy leftist or a super conservative righty. Your craft and being associated with the state of Indiana. Yeah. I mean, so, what about you? Yes, I mean, who's me. done more for this state than you? <laughs> so the four that we just named right there, mm -hmm. Letterman, Mellencamp, 
Uh, Bobby Plump yeah. and Larry Bird. Henry Lee Summer, we giving any nod to him, old old Hank? Well, I mean, if you're going to go down Friend that road, I, I would say Axl Rose maybe would even rank but higher. But he hates than Indiana. Him. Though, yeah, Henry yeah. okay. Lee Summer still lives here, and is still, but he's obviously not on the level like, of Mellon Camp. Or those like other I can't people. call you an Indiana legend if you hate Indiana. <laughs> what about David Lee Roth? Does he count? <sighs> I think he's there, but I don't think you can put him above Mellon Camp. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Mellon Camp's whole life is kind of around. Indiana. Right. Yeah. That small town thing. Right. Plus, his name is on buildings at IU. Like, yeah. he donates back to the state of Indiana. Yeah, that's yeah. a fair point. Um, but, man, Kev brings up an interesting point. There are so many good musicians yep. from the state mm -hmm. of Indiana. People forget, like, David Lee Roth and Axl Rose, mm -hmm. these big major front men from Indiana. You could make a musician category all on its own. Yeah, Possibly. absolutely. Yeah. Hey, what's uh, coming up on your show today? Uh, big Nige is still on vacation. So we're going to the bullpen, and yeah. we're bringing in Chris Hammer. Hey, yes, it's sir. It's a Hammer twin spin, a double shot. The Boy Wonder joins us this afternoon. Thank you. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Get ready for storm season because you know as well as I do, storms in Indiana can be fierce and they can come out of nowhere. So don't wait for a leak to have your roof inspected. Have peace of mind about your roof being able to handle any storm. Moss Roofing, M-O-S-S, -S, mossroofing.com provides free inspections and can spot potential issues before they turn into costly repairs. Whether you're looking for a siding replacement after a strong wind or a roof replacement after a hailstorm, Moss Roofing has options that fit any budget. Just ask Moss Roofing about their payment plans. No matter your situation, Moss Roofing has you covered with a job done right every shingle time. I love that. That's very funny. Contact Moss Roofing today. 317-747-3665. 317-747-3665. Tell them Tony Katz sent you. Moss Roofing, 747-3665 or online at Moss. M-O-S-S. -S, MossRoofing.com. There is no reason to live with achy joints. There is no reason to live with pain. And there is no reason not to seek out help. That help is at QC Kinetics in Eagle Creek, in Greenwood, and in Carmel. Under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, QC Kinetics can help you get rid of joint pain with no surgery, no drugs, and no steroids. That's right. These are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics, using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged joint tissue. Talk to QC Kinetics today. Get a free consultation. They even have Saturday hours, so you have no downtime at work. Call QC Kinetics today and tell them Tony Katz sent you. QC Kinetics is in Eagle Creek, in Greenwood, and in Carmel. Call today, 317-559-PAIN. That's 317-559-PAIN. QC Kinetics, 317-559-PAIN. L.D. Smith Plumbing A dirty stinking honest Life is busy enough without plumbing problems That's why you need an expert to fix it right the first time Plumbing may not be pretty, but we're pretty darn good at it And we'll always give you honest advice at a fair price That's the L.D. Smith Plumbing Promise Call today for $50 off any plumbing repair, big or small L.D. Smith Plumbing A dirty stinking honest are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, get 30% off all patio furniture, wicker, Berlin Gardens, poly, cast aluminum, teak, and more. Coming up in two minutes, police were busy all over the place overnight and into this morning. Plus, some of the wild audio of a courtroom appearance by this mother accused of killing her son a few years back and how the Sycamores are taking in last night's victory in the NIT Final Four. I'm Kurt Darling. That and more coming up from the Technology Recycler Studios. You're listening to 93 WIBC, WIBC HD1 Indianapolis. It's 11 o'clock. A last trip home.
I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. The bodies of six aid workers killed in an Israeli airstrike have been driven from Gaza into Egypt before being returned to their home countries. Three of the workers were British, one each from Poland and Australia, and a Canadian with dual American citizenship. A Palestinian driver has been turned over to his family in Gaza. World Central Kitchen and some other food aid charities have suspended operations there. Israel has allowed few shipments of food and supplies into Gaza's north, where experts say famine is imminent. On Tuesday, some of Israel's closest allies condemned the deaths, with President Biden suggesting the incident demonstrated that Israel wasn't doing enough to protect civilians. Fox's Tanya J. Powers. The forecast for severe weather moves east today. Cleanup continues from Kentucky to Atlanta, Missouri to the Ohio Valley from a series of tornadoes Monday and Tuesday. I've never seen nothing like it. And debris everywhere. I mean, it's like a mile down the road. She's in Kankakee County, Illinois. Tens of thousands without power in more than a dozen states. With the crosshairs of heavy rain and severe thunderstorms, now focused on the I-95 corridor with flood warnings from West Virginia to Philly and New York. Fox's Jeff Manasso, the suspect in a shooting at a restaurant in Nashville during Easter brunch is captured. Police say 46-year-old Anton Rucker was found about 100 miles away at a home in Princeton, Kentucky and was taken into custody without incident Tuesday evening, a day after being added to the state's most wanted list. Officials say he fled the scene in Nashville after the shooting, which killed one person in injured five others and may have stemmed from an argument between two men. Court records show Rucker has multiple past arrests as well as ongoing criminal cases against him, including for aggravated assault and gun charges. Lillian Wu, Fox News. For dozens of people trapped, hundreds injured, at least nine killed in an earthquake in Taiwan. America's listening to Fox News. 93 WIPC Mobile News. On the level, on the go. Police had a busy night. It is 39 and cloudy downtown. I'm Kurt Darling for Moss Roofing. Here's what's trending at 1102. A person was killed in a hit and run crash on the northwest side early this morning. It was at 86th and Zionsville Road. Also, a person was shot and killed at a laundromat just south of Lawrence along 38th Street near Midhofer. Then another person was shot to death at a home along LaSalle Street on the east side. A woman accused of killing her five-year-old boy and stuffing him inside of a suitcase in southern Indiana a few years back had a bizarre initial court appearance on Tuesday. I am Princess Khalifia Hatan Tupac II, representing the entity Dejan Anderson. Dejan Anderson, which is her real name, told the judge that she believes that she uh, that she's been watched by the NSA and also wants to represent herself. Anderson will be back in court April 25th. A former Indy cop is charged with rape and official misconduct. Myron Howard is said to have gone to a domestic violence call back in January, left with fellow officers afterwards, but then came back and raped the woman who was the victim of that domestic violence incident. That, uh, that among other things, he is now arrested and is in jail, and he was arrested on Tuesday. Officers now say a 22-year-old man is facing felony charges of sexual misconduct. Sasha Nixon explains. Fort Wayne police say Moises Briones Jr. had sex with a teenage girl and got her pregnant. They first took the lead on this case last February. A 15-year-old girl told police that she had been sexually abused by Briones and gotten pregnant with his child. DNA evidence apparently proves that Briones is the father. Sasha Nixon, 93. WYBC Mobile News. A huge sycamore crowd inside of Hinkle Field House last night to watch ISU beat Utah 100 to 90 in the NIT Final Four. Head coach Josh Schertz. When you get guys who are winners like this. You get guys who are competitors like this. You get guys who are high character guys like this who work and care. Sky's the limit. Ryan Conwell led the trees with 27 points. They face Seton Hall in the championship game on Thursday. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WYBC.com. If you're looking to sell your home and you want maximum equity but aren't sure how to get it, got a name for you, Mark Deedle. He's the only real estate expert I trust and recommend with the sale of my home. Here's what Crystal in Franklin had to say. I was moving to Kentucky and needed to move fast. I got the Mark Deedle marketing plan and was blown away. The plan worked. I got a full list price offer in the first weekend. Just like that, Mark and his team got it done. What separates Mark Deedle from the competition is the guarantee. Mark Deedle guarantees 
your home sold at a mutually agreed upon price and deadline, or he will buy it. You pick the move date, no long-term contracts, and you can cancel at any time. Reach out to Mark Deedle today. Call him at 317-755-4232 or go to markdeedle.com. Mark, D-I-E-T-E-L, markdeedle.com. Tell him Hammer and Nigel sent you. You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, Mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, five minutes after 11. You're listening to Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. A new poll came out. This one says that only 38% of voters think that Joe Biden would be alive at the end of his second term if he were to win. Can you believe that? Well, it's probably not wrong, is it? More than a third of people said that they believe Kamala Harris will be president by January of 2029 if the 81-year-old president is reelected. Okay, what was the percentage that thinks it's Kamala? 38% of people don't think that Joe Biden will live through a second term. And they all think Kamala will be the vice president? She'll be the president by January of 29 so, so, if Joe Biden is reelected. Okay, and I, I'm sorry, I just heard two things at once and it's totally my fault. Um, while I have 2010 vision, I have terrible hearing. So 38% of the people do not think Joe Biden will be alive. alive. At the end of his second term. So that's staggering that 62% of the country, only 62% of the country thinks the guy would even make it through mm-hmm. a second term. Like not even make it like at a high level, like physically make it and be alive at the end of a second term. Yeah. So the question was, are you confident the candidates will be alive at the end of four years in office. When it came to Donald Trump, 54% said they were confident. 21% said not confident. For Joe Biden, it was only 38% that they were confident he would be alive at the end of four years and 33% not confident. That's a staggering statistic. Um, and I, I'd love to do this here. Maybe I'll filibuster or have you filibuster to look up what percentage of people make it between the ages of 81 and 85 and are still a lot like just like normal people. How many people who make it to 81 actually are still alive by the time they're 85 years old? Life uh, expectancy. Right. That would be very well, interesting. Well, there's a, there's a few things that you're adding in there, and that is the stress of being the commander in chief and also the president. And you can understand why people would have this opinion of Joe Biden after you saw how he performed in the state. of the union address where sometimes he's shouting at you sometimes he's whispering and other times you know you're concerned if he even knows where he is he would be 86 at the end of his second term so it's not completely out of the realm for people to be concerned about this uh i think i may have found something here so give me just a a a second but well i read this but you're, you're right casey so this is the this is the absurdity of this guy even running. I mean, the, the absurdity is, one, a bunch of people don't even think he's going to live, which statistically probably will back that up. Oh, here we go. So this is a statistician did this. <laughs> now, now, this is through Reddit, so take this under. But he, there's a whole math formula here. This guy goes into great detail. Uh, he says, so the, the conclusion of this, an 80-year-old has a 58% chance of making it to 86. Okay, so it's 50-50. Yeah. Or a, or a 42% chance of dying before the age of 80. So that basically, he, Biden's 81. Again, take it for what it's worth. It's off Reddit, but there's a whole math formula here. So this person, if he's lying, put a bunch of effort into this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so let's just go with that. He has a 58% chance of actually making it alive to his in to his end game. Right. So, and that gives credit then to all of those people who say a vote for Joe Biden is actually a vote for Kamala Harris. Right. right. And, and okay, let's just, let's pretend that Biden, like, clearly has health issues. But let's just look at the performance, period. If the guy were 38, why would you want four more years of this? Mm -hmm. Let's pretend the guy were some vibrant, you know, Gavin Newsom. Let's just pretend it's Gavin Newsom. Why, Why would anybody, anybody, what is going on in this country that you say, this is going really well. The re-election is always about the ability to pivot back to the thing you want to pivot back to. There have been some really, really, really crappy presidents who have been re-elected in the, the second part of the 20th century and into the 21st century. Let's just look at the two most recent ones. Obama was a disaster and got re-elected. Why? Because the pivot became, well, the economy was in total shambles when I took over, and you may not like the total direction of the country, but you're not in a soup line. And he was right. able to sell that. Yeah. Bush. 
hey, I may not be doing a great job on this Iraq war, but this guy's a, a, a you know, military, you know, dodging, hating, whatever they made carry out to be, and you might end up in a mushroom cloud if I don't get real. It worked. Bad presidents get reelected if they can pivot to something that people can and frame the election around that thing. There's nothing. Well, what the, would Biden even talk about? Right. The only he can't pivot to his own record. What he is pivoting to is that I'm not Donald Trump. But that's not even working because right now Donald Trump is ahead at least four points in national polling. Now, there's another thing that's working against Joe Biden, and that is that younger voters are getting more concerned with the economy, and that's bad for Biden. So back in 2020, people aged 18 to 29, only about 11 percent of them were concerned about the economy. That number has skyrocketed to 47 percent now. And that's his base. That's we're going for the young people, right? Everything he does. He's got two, well, he's got many things working against him, but he's got two things that should be absolute total alarm bells if you're a Biden person. Number one is that he is not motivating people to vote. Elections are generally won based on which side is more motivated to vote. It, elections are basically turnouts at this point because people are so divided in their camps. He's not motivating people to, to vote. And two, he's actually losing people in his in his camp not only were they not voting like the black vote is going to be off the chart by historical comparison biden will still probably get more than 50 percent of the black vote but it would not surprise me at all if trump ends up with 40 percent of the black vote if he does that it's game over it doesn't it doesn't matter what biden does so those are the two major things that if you're a biden person you've got mm -hmm. to be just completely freaking out about so these younger voters they're citing a lot of things when it comes to the economy one interest rates are the highest they've been since they were in diapers and also rent prices and then you have energy prices that are also high. So, you know, if you're talking about the younger set that is just starting adulthood and that's you're not used to making a lot of money when you're straight out of college or straight out of high school. But you figure if you work at it over time, you'll get there. They're looking at situations now where they don't think they're going to get there. Like living with mom and dad now is standard op for a lot of people well you know we had this conversation you know kev has a roommate and and is a vibrant 28 year old single dude who's free to uh have unlimited nights out on the town and you know kev and i have had this conversation many times though about for someone his age who let's face it he's not getting you know independently wealthy working here but he works a job that he enjoys but this is now the real struggle which is boy what a what a game changer that is to if you're out at a local watering hole and you're having an enjoyable conversation uh, with a member of the opposite sex and you believe interpersonal relations might be on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And then you got to drop. Uh, would you like to come back to my parents place mm -hmm. like that is uh, that is a death knell, right? It is a death trap. It is a suicide rap. But you got to judge the you got to balance things right with living just being so incredibly expensive mm -hmm. of. How much is your game worth to you versus being able to afford food? Well, I think it's getting to the situation where if Kev is out and meets a young lady, chances are young ladies in the same situation. Right. She's living with mom and dad as well. Yeah, but it's okay. It's different, though, if a woman. Okay, let's face it. It's different if a woman is living with her parents. At, it, it's perceived as being different. Let me say it that way. If a woman is still living at home with her parents at, say, age 30, I think it's probably perceived differently than if a man is doing mm -hmm. it, right? Not that there's anything wrong with it. People do it for a variety of reasons. They take care of parents. It's a cost of living thing. I'm not flaw. I'm not flaw flawing. That's not even a word. Faulting. Faulting. Thank you. <laughs> Have you noticed that as you get older, like, words just don't form as well anymore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you. Uh, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the reality of the... E e the economics in which we live has forced other people to be, to be able to, have to do that. I don't know what that was. Kev, what did you do? Did I'm somebody look into that? <laughs> did somebody, wow. That was crazy. Talk about forming words. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Was that legit? Did that go out on the air? Boy, that was crazy. I think, so. I think it's fine now. There was some sort of like robotics or something. I don't know. But anyway, the point is <laughs> somebody's not wanting me to get this sentence out. People are having to do that for a variety of reasons beyond their control, mm -hmm. and that sucks, and it shouldn't have to be this way in America. Well, this is the choice. Joe Biden and Donald Trump and then 
Robert Kennedy. Uh, Trump has been out on the uh, campaign trail, making his way through some battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin. And before he got to Michigan, the Republican National Committee, they released that uh, Biden bloodbath website. And it's been a talking point now of Donald Trump, the border. And when it comes to the word bloodbath, you know, you've heard Joe Biden use sure. the word before, and it was fine. Donald Trump uses the word, even if he's talking about the auto industry, oh, boy, you know, everybody's all up in arms. So Peter Ducey wanted to ask Karine Jean-Pierre about this, a uh, little bit of clarification. Just a quick point of clarification, Karine. So when Donald Trump is talking about a bloodbath, it is violent rhetoric. What was it when Joe Biden said in 2020... We, uh, what we can't let happen is let this primary become a negative bloodbath. So I'm going to be really mindful and careful about uh, Donald Trump. But if you read, uh, because he is a he is a candidate, we're talking about a 2024 election. You should read hit what he said in its context. So you got to read what he said in context. I, so did you get an answer there? No, there was no answer. I'm surprised you didn't hear the word Hatch Act. They probably just so hate peter Ducey's existence because think about if he weren't there like who he asked 90 percent of the interesting questions mm -hmm. and 90 percent of the stuff we play on this show it seems like comes from the from mouth him. of peter Ducey. well it's i mean it's entertaining to hear him spar with her and how she stumbles over her words so let's go to a different white house spokesperson shall we this time it's john kirby and he is being asked about national security concerns in regards to the border the president absolutely believes that along that border we do have significant national security concerns that have to be met okay so so meet them so meet them yes well exactly uh start reversing your executive actions dismantling border security so uh we've got it again here's john kirby saying you know well what are we going to do about the border as the person in charge of presenting uh, preventing a terrorist attack in the homeland does President Biden think that some of these border crossers could be in the United States right now plotting a terrorist attack? The president's Americans? confident that uh, throughout the interagency, DHS, intelligence community, uh, that we're doing everything we can to be as vigilant as we can uh, to ensure the safety and security of the American people here at home. Can you imagine letting, what is it, the number under Biden now? Is it close to... 8 million, 9 yeah. million, like you've let like 9 million people in the country and you don't know who most of them are or where they are. And you're like, yeah, we're really doing everything. We're doing everything we're doing we our can. Best. Yeah, we're sure trying we our are. hardest. Okay, so a new list came out and you mention often, Rob, that you yes. want rich friends. You, yeah, you, I need you, more rich friends. You need more rich friends. I tend to really alienate all the rich people, though, mm -hmm. by saying highly highly controversial things on this radio show because you have an opinion on well this stuff? I, you know i look i accepted a long time ago casey i was going to be a poor person and mm -hmm. it's boy it's just it's made uh, it's made living uh financially difficult but boy do i sleep well at night okay well there's a new list out and it has the world's wealthiest women oh how exciting and we're, we're letting review. women have money now that's <laughs> exciting i can't wait there's one of those offensive comments right there it's kendall and casey on 93 wibc Tony Katz. I also did say that men are not women and women are not men, and men do not breastfeed and never will, because those are facts. And anybody who says otherwise, that person shouldn't be allowed to practice medicine. They're crazy. I will have that debate with anyone at any med school anywhere. Let's start setting a standard that we focus on medicine and not Insanity. Tony Katz, mornings 6 to 9 on 93 WIPC and WIPC.com. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Pendleton Pike. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors. So come celebrate on Wednesday, April 10th at 8101 Pendleton Pike, Suite E in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-648-5581 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. 
That's getethos.com. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you could start your new career in the high-demand, recession-resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So, get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. If you see me stopped in the McDonald's drive-thru, just staring at the menu with my what-should-I-order face, don't interrupt. It's the most important decision I'll make all day. Decide on delicious with buy one, get one for a dollar. Now with the hot and spicy McChicken, McDouble, or small fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Valid for product of equal or lesser value. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, see their large selection of grills, Weber, Traeger, and Napoleon, along with the Big Green Egg. So you want more rich friends, huh? It'd be helpful. Well, we got a list for you. Do you have any what you would describe as super rich, like actual friends? Um, you know, I, I had an acquaintance at one time who I would say was pretty rich. Like acquaintance like... You know what I'm getting at. No, not that kind of acquaintance. <laughs> oh. He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> like, is there anybody who you would, who you would qu- qualify as an actual friend mm-hmm. who you would say, man, that's a super rich individual? Mm. No, I don't think so. I don't think I do either. I don't think I have anybody who I would say that's a, like a good friend who is a super rich they, well we had a budding friendship with jefferson shreve but i think we blew that one nah, up. i don't know if that was really much of a friendship <laughs> he, brought he, brought us, wendy's. he brought us wendy's once yeah. but i think that was more to <laughs> yeah. just like try to soften soften, soften the up. interview uh but that would make sense right that you would keep company of people who are like-minded well, financial because, situations yeah like if you're trying to go to right. a restaurant or even a vacation sure. together you know you have to be at least similar right right yeah i mean you wouldn't um because unless you're they're... living above your means or whatever right. i'll and... meet you there in my private jet we'll see you when we get there <laughs> well okay and the other part of this this too would be you tend to meet people mm-hmm. that are living a similar lifestyle yeah. As you are. So where would you even meet the super rich people? Right. I think you'll find as your daughter gets older that your friends become the parents of her friends. Yeah. Does I got that make enough, sense? Yeah, I got enough friends, though. Like, I'm not yeah. actively seeking any new friends. Yeah, little... but you'll have to open that up because when she gets into school age, she'll make friends, and then you'll see those parents oh. at different events. Ooh, that sounds, that sounds like a lot of work. You might strike up a friendship. Yeah. I don't know. You may not, but I think... Other people do. Yeah, I don't want my kid to be held accountable for me. This is part of the thing. (laughs) Well, like, you're laughing about it, but this is one of the struggles, things that I do struggle with, is I don't want my kid, Mm -hmm. I want my kid to rise or fall on her own. I write about this in her journal all the time to her, that I want her successes to be her own, her failures to be her own. I don't want her to get something because of who I am. I don't want her to fail because of who I am. Mm -hmm. And so that's a struggle for me, is like, how much do I, well, I will obviously, I engage very, very much in her daily life and existence, how much of the things outside of the house do I actually, I'm not saying like go to the game or whatever, but I don't, I don't think I'd want to coach a, a sports team or I don't, I just, I just think it'd be too much of a distraction. You might change your mind when she gets older because uh, my opinion is a little different than yours. I always say that I'm the wall for my daughter to push off of or to what lean on. the hell on, does that mean? To lean on. It, it's like a, like a swimming reference, you know, yeah. when you go and you're swimming laps and mm-hmm. you go to do the turn and you kick off the sure. wall and it propels yeah. you farther in the pool. Oh, I've been doing that for Kevin for several years now. Yeah. So I've been practicing. Either that or, or the wall to lean on, <laughs> you know, when she's tired and needs a break. Right, I'm, right. I'm there to keep holding her up right so you might change and i think that that um you know helps with her success sure so okay so rich women yeah there are a bunch of rich women yep and uh the ex-wife of jeff bezos you know amazon founder yes she's on the list all right okay time out time out, time out, time out. 
does this count because she basically stole it from him? I mean, legalized, I mean, through the court system, right? I'm not saying she committed theft, but let's face it. She got the money that he made. I mean, she didn't go out and earn this herself, now, did that's, she? Now, that's saying that she wasn't a partner in the marriage when he started I'm that business. I'm saying it ain't Amazon because of her. That's what I'm saying, Casey. Well, it possibly could be because oh, without geez. her, what's he doing? He'd Is probably he be a lot more, a lot more wealthy, probably. You're saying that uh, she contributed nothing to their I life. I don't know. I'm just saying. While he was starting. You know, for all you know, what he stole she, the idea from her. Go on, she no, was an go ahead. integral part. Oh yeah, of that sure. house mm -hmm. while he was tinkering oh, no away yeah. trying to yeah. build this business. Yeah, she was definitely worth fifty-three billion dollars or whatever it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. she certainly. Look, this is in no way single. Uh, you know, stay-at-home moms uh, do tremendous work and they're undervalued and underappreciated. She wasn't hundred billion or fifty billion or whatever billion underappreciated. I mean, come on now. But I'm saying like she was not some she didn't invent anything. He invented the thing. She got his stuff. Well, you don't know. I mean, maybe I do know. Casey. Maybe maybe they invented it together. I know over this is making you talk. mad because you feel like I'm besmirching a woman or something. But I'm saying she got money in a divorce. I, I'm discounting the fact that you're saying she didn't contribute anything to Amazon. Did she invent Amazon? Well, you don't know. I do know. He was selling books in his garage. Right, Casey. and maybe it was her that said, "Hey, you know, you could oh sell my more gosh. stuff." You just can't. You just can't. <laughs> you're like the, you are a Purdue person. This makes perfect sense. She's rich. But I was just trying to simply state a fact, which is she got the money through a divorce. Okay, well, we will give him credit as Amazon founder, even though I'm sure she had an integral part of his success. She is fifth on the list of Forbes' richest women, even after giving away $17.3 billion. Yeah, Can I you imagine that? Uh, she already <sighs> gave away... Nearly $20 billion, and she's still on the list. This is how I know she didn't earn it. She wouldn't have given it away if she'd earned it herself. <laughs> she, uh, she vows that she's going to give the majority of it away throughout her life, which she's currently doing. There are 2,781 billionaires across how the world. How many women billionaires? Or just no, just billionaires general. total. Yeah. 2,781 billionaires across the world. They have a combined net worth of $14.2 trillion. Okay, wait, wait. So, so just clarification because my hearing's terrible. She is the richest woman in the world? She's fifth richest woman oh, in do the it, world. Oh, does it say who number one is? Uh, women? Yes. Yeah, um, it is. I believe it's uh, she's a French lady oh, from L'Oreal. No doubt uh, she earned it too, right? Makeup. Let me let me get there. Oh, so is it the Laura, Laura, Laura Lai or L'Oreal? L'Oreal? Isn't that the... <laughs> Isn't that the name of it? Uh, I think we got it, some of that around our house. It's the makeup lady, isn't it? Well, that's L'Oreal, right? I don't know. Yeah. You have the story. Well, this is like the fourth time this has happened today where you're asking me questions. You do the template. $99.5 billion is what she's worth. Her name is Francois <laughs> Betancourt Myers. Of course it is. She's the richest woman in the world. She is the granddaughter of the founder of L'Oreal. So she, right, again, another person who didn't earn it. No, she, yeah, you're right with that one. She inherited Is there a wealth. woman on the list who you would look at and go, this person earned the money? Like, they invented the thing, or they they started the business, or they, they didn't divorce it or inherited it. Is there anybody <laughs> on that list that we can point to that and That I would look they, up to? They earned it the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way because they invented something. Yeah. They did something wonderful. No, because a lot of them were partners with their husband. Thank you. <laughs> or they, like, um, Thank the you. Walton lady, uh, she so, got it from yeah. her granddad. I don't ever want to hear any woman ever go, I don't need no man. Clearly you do, because mm -hmm. without the man, none of you people have seven cents to rub together. Well, I think it's a matter of the a lot of these women, they inherited money from their grandfather, their father. A man. And, but then they invested it, and they grew their net worth. I mean, they didn't start out with $99.5 billion. You could put it in they a CD it. getting 5% and not <laughs> screw it up, Casey. I don't think it takes a lot, of, a lot of effort to go, hey, here's $20 billion. Good luck. Okay, so in this country, America has a record 813 billionaires. Oh, that's crazy. And they How are many? 813? 813 Ooh. billionaires, and they are worth $5.7 trillion combined. Okay, so we have had this conversation before, and mm -hmm. we're going to have it again right now, where I... I am all for people making as much money as they possibly can or inheriting it from a man or getting it in a divorce from a man. <laughs> However, women have to get it from men. I, I don't believe in like wealth caps. I don't believe in redistribution of wealth, any of that stuff. However, 
you can believe that and still recognize this is a gargantuan problem in our society that these people, the uber wealthy, keep getting more and more uber wealthy and the middle class is having to work two, three jobs just to simply stay afloat. That is not a recipe for a sustainable society. The chasm keeps growing larger and right. larger. So the world's richest person is Bernard Arnault. He Who? has he's the um, French businessman. He does that luxury fashion. Louis Why Vuitton. Why are all these people from France? Tiffany and Company. Yeah. Um, so he is worth two hundred and thirty three billion dollars. Oh, yeah. And then you've got Elon Musk coming in second. And then what is he? Does it say what Elon Musk is? Um, I feel like Elon Musk would like us. You think he would he would enjoy our show? Well, the one person who is a recent billionaire that I wanted to bring to your attention. Oh. Uh, this is was it just, Brad Chambers. This was just announced. No, it's Taylor Swift. Oh, of course. She is the first musician right. uh, net worth of one point one billion dollars. And how did she make her money, Casey? She did not make it off the back of a man. Oh, she, she didn't write about her... singing about men. Every single she song wrote about her is about songs, men. Though, Rob. Yes, they about they how weren't she writing them for her. They weren't performing them for her. She had ghostwriters. It was she? her talent. She, she, the the one person who made the list on her own <laughs> made it. <laughs> Writing, writing about, about men. men. <laughs> Let's get to the news. It's Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. What will they decide? I'm Kurt Darling. Here's what's trending at 1130. A federal appeals court is hearing arguments today over a controversial Texas immigration law, which gave Texas the power to arrest migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally. The Biden administration argues only the feds can do that. The president spoke with Chinese President Xi Jinping on the phone Tuesday. Fox's Ryan Schmelz. The White House says President Biden brought up TikTok and its ownership during his call with Chinese President Xi Jinping. President Biden has said he would sign a bill that would ban the platform in the U.S. unless its parent company, ByteDance, divested stake in the social media app. The bill passed in the House with significant bipartisan support, but it's unclear what will happen in the Senate. In Washington, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WYBC.com. Universal Windows Direct. Universal Windows Direct. Listen to this incredible deal going on with my friends at Universal Windows Direct. If you call today, 317-659-7574. That's 317-659-7574. Schedule a free in-home estimate. When you do that, for every two windows you buy, you're going to get the next two free. Buy two, get two. Buy four, get four. Buy 20, get 20. There is no limit with Universal Windows Direct, but you got to call today, 317-659-7574, and schedule that free in-home estimate. Oh, and on top of that, when you call and schedule, if you say, hey, Rob Kendall from WIBC told me to call, they're going to take $250 off your project. Universal Windows Direct backs it all up with a true lifetime warranty for as long as you own your home and 30 years to the next home owner. 317-659-7574. Tell them Rob sent you. Do you get sinus infections, congestion, sinus pressure and pain above your eyes, below your eyes, sinus headaches? You've gone to the doctor. You've visited urgent care over and over again, and it's always the same thing. Oh, uh, I know. Let's try antibiotics and nasal sprays. But the sinus infections keep coming back. The good news? Relief is possible. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of Indianapolis Sinus Center called balloon sinuplasty. Imagine the relief of not having to deal with your sinus infections anymore. Set an appointment today with Indianapolis Sinus Center and find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Call 317-528-9650. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger For the ones who get it done.
It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a layback Sunday afternoon. You wish would never end. The homemade taste of bluebell, and good friends gathered round. The good old days are being made right now. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream. A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made Look for Bluebell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Andy's Leader and Patio Installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. You're listening to the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. So Steve-O asked Bill Maher to do something. Bill Maher refused. So I think we need to have a conversation about this. You remember who Steve-O is. He's He's the jackass guy. Right. He's one of the jackass guys. And he had been on a podcast with Bill Maher in the past. And so Bill Maher was booking him as a guest again. Yeah. And Steve-O said, okay, fine, I'll come on the podcast again. But can you please not smoke marijuana while I'm there. Can, oh, okay. T- take an hour break. I've been uh, sober for 16 years. I'm really trying to celebrate my sobriety. So can you please not smoke marijuana in front of me while we do this interview? Okay, so he did he let him know this in advance? Yes. This was in advance. This was in advance. So if you're going to book me... I have this issue, you know I have this issue, and my you know, request is that you please not engage in that while I'm in the studio with you. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Right. And Bill Maher apparently refused and called it a deal breaker. So Steve-O didn't go on the okay. podcast. Okay, so, okay, well, there's no harm, no foul then. Um, so what, are, are you asking me, like, who's to blame here, who's the fault? Well, I'm just wondering, because here's the thing, Bill Maher uh, has done that in the past. Like, he w- had Cheryl Crow yeah. on, and Cheryl Crow asked him to respect her boundaries as the guest. Please don't do that. And he did. He refrained from smoking in front of her. Yeah. So he's kind of picking and choosing whose boundaries he's going to follow. Maybe he didn't want Steve-O as a guest that bad. Well, or that's he, it. That's the answer, right? Care. That's the answer, right? I mean, you know this in our business. There are certain people who are guests where they're like, you know, uh, I can only do it at such and such a time, and, you know, we got to either take it or leave it, and we take it, and we rearrange our schedule. There are some guests where we lay down the law and say, we have this time available. If you want it, fine. If not, see ya, because... You don't treat everybody equally. Different people. He's in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. Cheryl Crow probably has an infinitely larger fan base, no offense to (laughs) Steve-O, than than Mm Steve-O. And so he's probably more willing, based on what he thinks the result of the person's appearance on his show will be. It's like any sort of other workplace thing or contract or whatever. You're going to give what you think you're going to get in return. Okay, so Bill Maher is the one who is asking him to appear. So isn't a little bit of it on Bill Maher to say, okay, uh, I we, want you on my show. I'm asking you to be here. Nah. Yeah, I can, I can, you know, withhold for an hour. Because there's, there. look, we've kicked this around before. Like, we're somebody, ah, this might be interesting. We'll blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if they can do it, then it'll be fine. If not, I'm not rearranging my schedule for you. Like, I will reach out to you as a favor or a whatever, but I'm not, like, rearranging my schedule you're gonna do it because i have what you want let's face it mar has what steve-o wants like yeah the publicity uh, right i mean time who's who's is there some group clamoring oh my gosh we really need to get steve-o in our next movie no so he can kind of set the rules maybe he was doing it as a favor maybe thought hey this guy's mildly interesting and he's got some funny stories so i don't know i I thought you meant he invited him i was under the impression he had been invited and then pulled this once he got there if everybody knows in advance and you you call it off no harm, no foul. Steve-O's not wrong for requesting that. 
Mars not wrong for saying no, and as long as everybody knew in advance and made adult choices, then mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. It's his, it's Bill Maher's show. He right. can make the rules. Sure. You don't like it. You don't need to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, something else that I wanted to remind our listeners about, that is the French Port Pirates event, which is coming up on April 11th, and that is going to be held. And it's a location on North Meridian Street. Now, I know that you tweeted it out the other day. You can learn more at Mike. It's Patriots. Beckley. It's not Pirates. There may be some pirates Did there. Did I say pirates? It's, you said pirates. Front there, porch patriots. We'll see if Micah can bring someone dressed as a pirate. <laughs> no. So it's front porch patriots. It's yeah. April the 11th. Casey and I are going to uh, be there. It's a public event. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll retweet it again here in just a minute out on, um, you know, uh, at Robin Kendall and Casey. Maybe will retweet it. Casey Daniels 317. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to, you can meet us. Uh, the address will be right there on the sheet there on Meridian Street. You can hang out with us. Um, Michael will be there saying a few words. We're going to talk about a little bit about that. And so it's an opportunity. If you have ever said, I mean, my life's ambition is to meet either Rob Kendall or Casey Daniels, probably with most people it would be you, Casey. Uh, they will have an opportunity This to is do the that. chance. So it's coming up on April 11th, and the event starts at 6.30, and Rob's going to tweet out all the information. It is, um, and this is pretty crazy. This is how important this event is to me, Casey. It is the first day of the Masters, mm-hmm. which means if the event is at 6.30, I will milk it to the very last minute, which means I've probably got to be out of there by 5.45. So that means this is important enough to me that I'm going to miss probably an hour and 15 minutes of the opening round of the Masters mm-hmm. to go do this thing. Okay, now you mentioned that Mike is going to say a few words. He's going to speak. Do you have any idea what he's going to talk about? Oh, no idea. Be really I hope he talks about you. Uh, candidate for Indiana's lieutenant governor. Well, this is kind of what it is. It's a chance for people who are, and anybody's welcome to come, obviously, but kind of geared toward people in central Indiana who are either going to be delegates or running for delegate to hear kind of his plan as lieutenant governor you know, and I'm guessing around holding the Republicans accountable, holding whoever the the Republican nominee for governor accountable is, because that's what this is about. We know now, based on the fact that these people have been running for governor for a year, and as we talked about earlier in the show, you can't get a straight answer from at least five of the six of them about what they're going to do about anything, that whoever wins... You're going to need someone with a bully pulpit to hold these people accountable. And it sure ain't going to be Rod Bray, and it ain't going to be Todd Houston in the Indiana General Assembly. And Micah is that opportunity. If you want to hold, if you want an actual shot at getting things like property tax reform enacted, you're going to need an advocate in there with the bully pulpit. And Micah is giving people that that chance to, to be that choice, and we'll see if people take it. Something I wanted to bring to your attention was that uh, our governor, Eric Holcomb, signed an executive order. Now, this is in regards to the solar eclipse that's coming up on Monday, right? And this is in anticipation of increased emergency services. That He loves those executive orders, doesn't he? Okay, but here's the thing. Do you know right now, according to this order, right now, today, as we speak, yeah. we are under a statewide Ooh. disaster emergency. Well, that's almost has as much teeth as his one that he had during COVID, right? I mean, it almost has as much. We're under an emergency right now. Well, the order declares the statewide disaster emergency became effective Tuesday, March 26th. Uh, okay, so this is going to work in my favor because I actually talked to Matt Hiblin, our boss, before mm-hmm. the show, and I said, I think I should work from home on Monday yeah. because of the danger to my well-being <laughs> if indeed we're going to have thousands of people mm-hmm. parked along the interstate gazing at this thing and I think I've got him on the hook on this one so this really is going to work in my favor really that we're under already a state of emergency mm-hmm. and that I definitely need to work from home on Monday to prevent uh, some sort of torturous experience happening to me. So the order states that over the past year, state and local agencies have been preparing for this rare event, which hasn't been seen in Indiana Mm. since 1869, and it isn't expected to happen again until 2099. The governor expects a massive influx of people to the state, which impact emergency response times, communications, transportation, and several other parts of critical Here, infrastructure. Here's how you got to handle this, Casey. It's very simple. If somebody's yeah. breaking the law, just arrest them. Mm. And especially from another state. That'll teach these people to come to our state and ruin experiences for us. That if somebody is no leeway, mm-hmm. if they got an out-of-state license plate, you put the cuffs on them, you remand them to the nearest holding facility, and you make them sit without food or water for 24 hours. That'll fix this thing immediately. Let's send a message, Holcomb. Let's go! Okay, so this uh, this order became effect on Tuesday, March 26th. Yeah. 
Yeah. So right now it's in effect, and it is terminated at 11.59 on Tuesday, April 9th. Now, our boss, David Wood, just walked past, so I hope he heard what danger we are in coming to work <laughs> on Monday. So, David, I think it would behoove everyone to let me work from, work from home Anything on Anything so that you can work from home. Absolutely. Okay, and because why not, I wanted to share this with you, the path of totality in deviled eggs. Janet Holcomb tweeted this out. Oh, of course she did. It is a, it's a serving dish, mm -hmm. uh, a food serving dish in mm -hmm. the shape of Indiana. Right. And it is full of deviled eggs. Uh -huh. And where the path of totality goes, the deviled eggs have a little extra paprika. Hey, my husband destroyed your life. Here's some deviled eggs. Are we even? <laughs> <laughs> she said, can you tell I'm excited for the solar eclipse? So this must be a thing. People are having solar eclipse parties, right? Oh, And this really? is this is one way to for do it. Wh so what? We're going to... Uh, yo, you're going to one of these, aren't you? I'm going to be throwing one. I'm going to be <laughs> Wait, charging... What? I'm going to be charging uh, entry fee to people on the street. <laughs> and so, one of my friends is going to be a bouncer. So, are you legit having a party at your place are you passing out solo cups what are you doing up. yeah we're probably <laughs> yeah, gonna play some making it up as i go along yeah uh-huh uh-huh i did you notice that we haven't been invited oh i just i was waiting to tell you guys i uh -huh. wanted to be a surprise he's got to get the details gotta, worked it's out too dangerous i gotta work from home i wouldn't be able to go anyway all right we need to address what's going on with your poor finger over I've there been your injured. thumb another injury yeah and this one i think could be serious it's been a rough week for you it's kendall and casey on 93 wibc Tonight on the Tony Kinnecast, is the algorithm the next super evil overlord? Are Uber and DoorDash drivers doomed to corporate slavery? Nah. Tune in at 7 p.m. right here or the podcast anytime. We Grow Hair Indie. WeGrowHairIndie.com. That's the place if you are looking for a better head of hair. And I can tell you that because I have been a part of the We Grow Hair Indie family. And the results, well, I see them each day in the mirror. And three years later, they're still outstanding. Yeah, if you've been looking in the mirror and saying, man, I'm, I'm losing a little bit on top. I'd like to get my confidence back. Then that phone call to We Grow Hair Indie is the one you should make. 317-522-2995, 317-522-2995, or head over to WeGrowHairIndy.com and schedule that free consultation. No hassle. Darren and the gang, they're going to take a look at what's going on with your dome, and then they'll advise you on how they think you should best move forward. Then the ball is in your court. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, and by everything, I mean more hair on the top of your head by calling we Grow Hair Indie today, 317-522-2995. Tell them Rob sent you. Gravely's Mow the Distance sales event is back. Now through Monday, you can save up to 25% with special financing available on America's most rugged mowers, including the Gravely ZTHD. It's the residential mower built to commercial standards with the power, durability, and high performance Gravely is known for. With a Gravely, you can count on more comfort, more speed, and more precision. But hurry, these special Mow the Distance savings are only available through Monday and only at your authorized Gravely dealer. I was eight years old and running with a dime in my hand to the bus stop. Am I in trouble? Why? Well, like medically. I Maybe. You've been getting injured a lot this week. What is going on with you? Well, I didn't think this was any big deal, and then now you've got me totally freaked out about it. Well, I don't, I don't think it's any, like, we're not rushing you to the hospital. Right. But I think you definitely got maybe a little self-surgery that needs to be done it is the kendall and casey show <laughs> my now my, my name for now is rob kendall mm -hmm. as long as i'm here uh your name is casey daniels yeah um, you've been dealing with this all morning all night actually well yeah so yesterday before the storms hit mm -hmm. i had not yet cut my grass yeah. at my palatial estate and you were trying to be a nice neighbor and right. do it during the proper hours right. of grass cutting. absolutely so i got home from work and did the grass cutting and then of course i don't know you, of course, live in a sky rise, mm -hmm. so you don't have any trees to worry about. But right. those of us who live on modest, you know, suburban homesteads, mm -hmm. you, the leaves will get, like, all around the bushes and everything in the fall. And so I was trying to, you know, rake them out and yeah. get them where I can mulch them and try to make my property look nice. You know, because that way the government can tax it more if they say it's worth more. Right. So I'm really doing That's myself really a giant disservice. And as I was you doing just let it go. Well, <laughs> trust me. You're too proud. Be far more convenient. Um, 
the, the, I was raking leaves mm-hmm. and there's rose bushes in my backyard. Yeah. And I got pricked. Yeah. By one of the thorns. One of the thorns on the rose bush. Yeah. And I thought, well, that really hurts. And yeah. I saw what appeared to be some sort of something under my. Uh, under your skin. Under now. my skin, and I didn't th- think about it. Didn't really think about it yesterday. Tried to get it out with a pair of tweezers, couldn't. Mm-hmm. Didn't think about it yesterday. And then today, I accidentally touched it, and it kind of hurt. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'll just ask Casey. You're a mom. You you know all about this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you basically were like, you've got to take a needle and jam it in there and pull it out. And <laughs> well, you now said, I'm very worried. You said you tried pliers, and that didn't work. Tweezers, and tweezers. Twe- tweezers, uh, yes. that didn't work. And I think, yeah, the tweezers, if it were sticking out above the skin, mm-hmm. that might have worked. Sure. But it's not sticking out above. The, it's buried now under the skin. Yeah. And so every time you touch it, that little thorn is just going to go out. It's going to go smite so, you. So, so Will not come out on its own. I, I don't know. Is it like thing under not a... if that skin starts growing over it more? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what do I need to do? What are I, you? I think what we need to do is we need to find either a needle or a safety pin uh-huh. that we can sterilize, uh-huh. and you can just kind of uh, get it in there under that skin and oh, then the, uh-huh. dig that out. That sounds horrible. No, it'll be it'll be fine. I think I would just rather live with the pain. You think and whatever so? this causes. I mean, you're gonna you're proposing you take a needle mm-hmm. and you jam it into my skin. Well, well, I jam is maybe excessive. I think maybe just kind of, you know, squirrel it in there. Just well, I don't understand a why bit. the tweezers wouldn't have done that. Isn't that what the tweezers do? Well, tweezers. You have to have the tail end of the thorn to be able to grab onto it with the tweezers. And oh. I think you're at a situation where the skin is over the needle that's embedded into your body. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're going to have to pry that out with something like a needle. Is this, a, is this like a life? risking issue like if i did not do this today would i be in some sort of medical severity well did you wash it i mean are we at risk of a staph infection here you well, did well, properly I mean, like I, clean well it, like right? i wash my hands yeah. uh, you know i mean whatever i think we'll be okay and then i think we need to sterilize the needle or the safety pin and a little alcohol or rubbing alcohol or or some straight alcohol maybe from hammer and nigel's beer fridge yeah. um or, or a flame Get it nice and hot, and then just, it, it'll only hurt for a second. Yeah. It'll feel better getting the needle out of your finger. Yeah. Don't you think? Well, I don't know. You're now, you're, I didn't think this was any big deal. Now you've got me totally uh, freaked out about this thing. <laughs> well, you don't want that in there forever, do well, you? Well, no, I just assumed it would come out on its own over time. All right. Well, you could. You no, can I'll do play what you want. Game. If I look, if I die, I mean, it's whatever. You can explain it to people how you did. <laughs> You think that I'm going to get you with a safety pin? Well, I don't know. I just, I just, now I'm kind of, you know, how I get about things. And now I'm, I didn't think this was any big deal. Now, how did it get so far down? I mean, yeah, I, that's what I, I don't understand. Well, you clearly you jammed it in there, probably broke off or something. Doesn't the baby have like a diaper pin or something around the house? You could use that. What year do you think this is? 1838? <laughs> So, diapers don't have pins on them anymore. So that's a no. I don't know. Some people still use cloth diapers, I think. They really? Don't, yeah, they don't like the plastic diapers. Oh, yeah. So they're expensive. You Boy, that, that is one of the great in modern inventions are those plastic diapers. I mean, what a what a lifesaver that is to just be able to take the thing, throw it in the trash, yeah, and be on to the next one. and be done with it. Yeah. Can you imagine washing that out in the oh, sink? Oh, my goodness. Or the toilet like yeah, they used to? I really do wonder how people, I mean, clearly... <laughs> You only know the life and the time in which you live, mm-hmm. so your relevance is all the time in which you are living. However, you do look back on the olden days, yeah. and you're like, oh, my gosh, how did people do this? Right. That must have been horrible. I mean, raising children is difficult just with all the modern comforts mm-hmm. and technologies that are presented to us. I can't imagine how, yeah. I mean, even, I don't know. 50 years ago, people did it. I'm very concerned about you right now because you are favoring this thumb. Do you realize you're doing that? Um, what You've I, been doing it all morning. I'm doing what? You're favoring it. You're like being very gentle with it. You're you're holding it out of the way so it doesn't get hit. Well, I'm, but now I'm very scared <laughs> that I'm going to need some sort of like, you know, amputation or something mm-hmm. if this doesn't go well. So we needed like a tourniquet for you earlier in the week for your leg injury. Yeah. Now you're about to lose a thumb. Yeah. You're you're never going to be able to hitchhike again. I can't believe I can't believe I made that mistake of getting you know pricked by that by mm-hmm. that rose bush. Mm-hmm. But it was just there were so many leaves, and I was just so focused on raking the leaves out of yeah. the the le- the uh, garden area, yeah. for lack of a better term. How does the yard look now? I mean, was the injury worth it? <laughs> no, well, here's the thing. Okay, now I don't. Again, you don't. 
you have wisely just built such a large structure mm-hmm. that you don't have any yard really to worry about yeah. per se. Unless the HOA says that there's a patch that yeah. needs to be fixed. So those who don't know, Casey had lived at her house for a week and some <laughs> unwell-meaning person. You mean my neighbor? Rapped on the her president door of the HOA? and was barking at her about, I don't know, what a patch of grass or yeah. something. I mean, there's literally a patch of grass in it, your front it's yard. It's like a postage stamp, and we had one little circle area that was dead from the previous owner, mind mm-hmm. you. But we had not even finished unpacking, and they were already knocking on the door telling us to fix it. This year, this summer, we're not going to have that problem. Uh, everything's fine with my yard other than, and I have this every year, I have a dandelion issue that I'm going to I'm gonna have to spray. Oh, yeah. And the, the backyard is worse than the front yard, but obviously with the rain coming, I couldn't really do that, mm-hmm. uh, whatever that was, Monday that yeah. I partook in the grass cutting adventure. The first grass, you know, the, the first cut is the deepest. The first <laughs> grass cutting adventure is always the worst because you're totally out of grass cutting shape. Mm-hmm. So you feel pathetic about yourself after you, because I did weed eating, I did the edges, right. I did rake the leaves, right. like I said. And after you get done, it's like, I am just ready for a long nap and that's pathetic. Yeah, that's the sign. So the yard's in tip-top shape. Now, now, do you do the thing where you do a different direction each time you cut the grass? Uh, so you don't get the wheel marks nah, in there? Nah, I used to. I, I'm 40 now. I don't care anymore. Oh, really? When I was a younger man, yes, I took yeah. great pride in how a lawn would look. Mm-hmm. Now it's like I got to get it done. You do vertical one week, horizontal the next, and then maybe diagonal. I uh, I used to, yes. The issue that I have, and this is a, anybody with an animal will agree with me on this, Different patches grow differently in my backyard mm-hmm. based on where, where Bruce, Bruce Arena has mm-hmm. decided that is the best place to use the bathroom that day. So it wasn't so much, oh, my gosh, the whole lawn is out of control. It yeah. needs to be cut. It was this portion of the lawn is completely out of control. Mm-hmm. This is not. This part's dead. And now this is like I've got to try to even these out to make it look somewhat presentable. Mm-hmm. Although, why do I even care? I have a privacy fence in my backyard. What do I even care? Yeah, that's true. It doesn't nobody's, matter to anyone. Nobody's actually seeing that but you. Now, the front yard yeah. looks glorious. Oh, yeah. You've got the flag in the front oh, yard, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. Do you do you have that lit, by the way? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm I'm in all I'm in all compliances, Good. Good. Uh, proper procedures. Mm-hmm. Yes, the... Uh, what do they call that? A solar light or mm-hmm. whatever will light up the flag at night. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yes. I, I imagine that you have motion sensors around. Oh, your I house, totally don't do. You? Yeah, uh, you, I told you the, seem like that kind of guy. Well, I told the story the other night when the bird with the, the birds are still a thing. By the way, they are. We've tried the owl. We've tried it. This still a thing. It's been going on. We for didn't a month. get rid of the birds. No, no, no. They're still they're back. on the awning. Every still. day, at least I say at least twice. Usually three times a day. We have to go out there and knock that nest down. And now, they will not quit. Here's a real question. At what point are you going to Never. concede Never. and say, no, I've no, lost no, no. this battle? I've told them. I shake the stick at them. I mm-hmm. see them looking at me. Mm-hmm. And I tell them, I say, you will not win this year. You will not win. I have given you two <laughs> years of this this house. This is not your house. You mm-hmm. don't make the mortgage payment. You have nothing to do with help, helping me buy it. You don't go to work each day. You don't contribute. Yeah. You can have that tree. They're not paying taxes. I will give you the tree. Yeah. You may have my tree. It is the giving tree. The squirrels mm-hmm. have found a nice home in the tree. However, Bert, you are not getting this. I don't care if every day the entire summer, and it means I don't get to go on a vacation or anything else, I will be knocking that that semblance of an S down because that is my house. You're like Teddy Roosevelt with the birds. Talk softly, carry a big stick. Absolutely. Yeah, but they're not afraid of your big stick. The problem with the stick is when you knock when the stuff down. And we are down, talking about a stick. Yeah, like an actual physical. Well, it's a yeah metal stick. Yeah. And uh, the problem with the stick is when you knock stuff down, then you got to sweep it up and you got to walk it all the way out behind the barn mm-hmm. because. That's if you where the trash le- is. if you le- well if you leave it there they'll take it and oh, make it again. Recreate. These birds are smart yeah. and they know what they're doing and I've told them and I know they know w- what I'm saying to them. You- they're not winning. Maybe you should hire the birds to get the mulch out of your yard. That way you won't injure yourself anymore. <laughs> yes, I'll hire the Put birds. Them to work. I'll contract with the birds. Yes, we have such a good working relationship so far. All right, well I guess I'm gonna go uh, let you stab me now. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it's gonna be glorious. Thank you for listening today. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Kevin. Tony Katz is up next. This has been Kendall and Casey on 93 WIBC. Good Wednesday, friends. It is Rob for my friends at the Bath Authority. You know, the Bath Authority, they do it all. Walk-in tubs, replacement showers, tub-to-shower conversions, and more. Spring has sprung, and if you're saying, man, I'd like to upgrade my home, I'd like to put a little TLC into my place of residence, then a call to the Bath Authority might be the thing for you. And listen to this deal going on right now with the Bath Authority. If you call today at 317-532-5711, 317-532-5711, 
and schedule your free in-home estimate. So free doesn't cost you a darn thing. When you do that, you're going to get $1,000 off a new shower or bath, plus 36 months of interest-free financing. Let me say that again. 317-532-5711. Schedule that free in-home estimate, and you'll get $1,000 off a new shower or bath, plus 36 months of interest-free financing. TheBathAuthority.com is where you can see it all. TheBathAuthority.com. Tell them Rob sent you. Do you find yourself stuck in a timeshare? Get the real facts about the timeshare industry and your options for cancellation. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has put together a free information guide that reveals the secrets the timeshare industry doesn't want you to know, including the five ways to get rid of your timeshare. Call now and get this timeshare information guide absolutely free. Call 800-919-3200. That's 800-919-3200. 800-919-3200. This week at Sullivan Hardware and Garden, get 30% off all patio furniture, wicker, Berlin Gardens, poly, cast aluminum, teak, and more. On the level, on the go. 93 WIBC Indianapolis. Coming up. There could potentially be some snow.